Good morning, everybody. I've got, oh, I'm already looking at um, some chats here. Good morning. Hey, everybody. We had some technical difficulty. I don't know if you saw it. If you didn't see it, thank goodness. But uh, apparently, we, I messed some things up. So we're still trying to figure things out. Um, Twitch, I'm not sure. Is Twitch live yet? Aneta? Oh, I think Aneta just left. We had a, a small problem with our, our, re, our live stream, so we we're just going in here and, and double checking everything. Uh, Twitch does not seem to be working at the moment, but we do have uh, we do have 33 people on Facebook and we have seven people on YouTube, which is great. Uh, Periscope, uh, which is Twitch. We have zero currently online, but uh, I'm sorry, which is uh, Twitter, but Twitch, for some reason, we, we've been trying to really work hard and getting more involved with the Twitch um, stream so we can get more followers there because uh, that's, that's an area that um, a lot of people use, and I'd like to be able to kind of um, spread the word about what we're doing here at sketch to animate but again, hope everyone is well. I'm going to go back to my chats. Um, I am not gonna have. Oh, you can see my little see the little light. I got that new light up there. Um, I won't have Aneta for a while because she just started school uh, remotely. Uh, she was supposed to start school, as you know, if you've been following our streams. She was supposed to start in Van uh, Toronto area. Uh, she was gonna be there starting now, but because of the whole COVID situation, uh, she is working. Uh, remotely uh, learning through uh, her lectures in South Africa. She just said she had a four-hour lecture uh, the first day off the bat, so she's inundated with a lot of work to do. Um, she's doing some web developing stuff uh, she's learning, so, which is great. Um, but let's see, I'm trying to think. Oh, I just finished uh, recording with Nick and Aaron over at Creature Art Teacher for my very, very first um, tutorial that it will be a paid tutorial and it will be on Calipeg. Now Calipeg you guys know I'm going to be using uh, I use that quite often it's a new app for the iPad uh, they're in the beginning stages of it they launched a Kickstarter now they're, they're going full force uh, they're trying to work out um, troubleshooting on it um, but we wanted to go ahead and, and give you like a kind of a full in-depth look at Calipeg and not only is Cal this tutorial that I'm doing for Calipeg going to go through the whole infrastructure of what they currently have in it, but I will also, I'm doing it through the approach of how I animate using keyframe animation. So all of the traditional aspects of animating uh, effects, uh, storyboarding, character designing, doing layouts and backgrounds, that kind of stuff, all of that stuff I will be uh, inundating through Calipeg. So even if you weren't a Calipeg user, uh, I think you could still find this useful in terms of learning uh, the process that I approach when I do animation with uh, keyframe traditional style animation. So that's pretty exciting. And then we're also looking at putting out our first tutorial, paid tutorial through sketch to animate in the coming months as well. So we're not only just doing our back to basics free, which we'll continue to do, um, and that's also going to help support with Patreon, but we're also, uh, the next phase that I'm going into now is uh, offering paid tutorials uh, through Sketch to Animate, and also we launched our first one, which will hopefully, if Nick says if all goes well, we'll have that out through Creature Art Teacher mid to end of June. So I still have a, a couple of things I need to wrap up for that, but he's gonna in the middle of editing. But it went great, and I'm excited. I'm really, really excited about it. So I'm just gonna look over the chat's real, chat room real quick. Uh, Life Fantasy X says hello. Jorge says hello. Hey there. We got Drewby in the house. We got Giannis. We got Nate. We got Chance Art. Kitchen Cat. 
Uh, Giannis, uh, Joe Root. Oh, Giannis says, how are you? I'm doing great. Joe Root's in the house. We got Amir and uh, Marahashi. Hello, Marahashi. Um, and David Simon. Hey, hello to everybody. Um, let's see. Aaron, uh, Life Fantasy X says, did you see Aaron's battle with the one chip challenge? <laughs> yes. Um, stupid comes to mind. Uh, but hey, you know, all for the uh, sake of entertainment. Yeah, it's it's funny. They I saw them do that, and I'm just like, no, that's that's not going to happen. I mean, I'm thinking forward, not just the initial ouch that would hurt to have that hot chip. If you guys are all wondering, Aaron did a one chip challenge, the one chip challenge, which is basically one of the hottest chips on the planet. You buy it. It literally comes in a little package. They send it to you, and then they recorded it during one of their live streams last week. I think it was um, Thursday, or I'm sorry, Friday, and uh, it was it was kind of I was waiting for them to finish it because it's not just the initial hotness of it all. It's what happens when it goes through your digestive system that will is also a killer. So yeah, hats off to them for doing that. But no, you're not going to see me doing that kind of challenge, guys. I might do other challenges. Hey, that'd be great, but um, not the one chip challenge. That's that's out of my league. So let's see. Oh, we have Alice in the house and Coconut Justice. Hello, everybody. Hello, Coconut Justice. How are you doing? And then we've got Drewby. Hey, Coconut Justice, how's your day been? Oh, okay. You guys are gonna have your own conversation. That's awesome. So today. We are, uh, since I'm, I'm back to my kind of like a semi-normal setup here, uh, we're going to go back into TV paint. And um, I had promised yet again that I would have my uh, beat boards done. Unfortunately, they are not done. And I have a really, really good excuse. I, I was working on a tutorial for Aaron and, and Nick. So that literally took up a pretty much the majority of my time. But I have been able to post some things. You might have seen a little snippet. Uh, on my Facebook and Instagram uh, of a little dragon that I did. I first did that dragon in uh, in Calipeg during uh, Carlos and Jack's live stream at Sketch Zone. And if you guys were able to capture, the, uh, watch that, um, we submitted and sent in um, on our social media the animation that we did. But I then I decided to take that animation since I was doing this tutorial and take it further and add and tie it down and then clean it up and then add effects, which I brought into and used as part of my Calipeg tutorial. So it was great. I was able to use that rough animation and add it in. So if you get a chance, go check it out. Um, you go check out Sketch Zone. It's on the Sketch Zone. But also, if you want to see it, just look at my live feeds. They're up there. You'll see the little dragon puffing out a little flame and some smoke. So, uh, Jorge goes, Yeehaw, see Aaron eat the chip. It was horrifying and fun all the same. Yeah. Um, yeah, not going not gonna to do that one. So, today, I'm going to switch over to, let's see, where are we? Uh, I've got my... Do, 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 Cintiq. There we go. I can do that. There we go. We're back over to the Cintiq. So today I'm going to keep moving forward. You saw a little uh, little board I did quickly for um, this pretty particular moment. This was like a, you know, I always try to put some kind of like quick sketch before I, I come, come out live, which is kind of getting stressful at times because I'm like, I got to show, I got to draw something. So I literally drew this thing in like five minutes or less. I had five minutes or less to plop it out there, draw it, and then put it all on my social media. So, um, but it actually turned out pretty fun. This, this would be what I call a storyboard or a beat board as well. Uh, these are my storyboard roughs. And it's great because now today's my focus is going to be a little bit on the baboons. I'm, I'm not quite getting the hang of them yet. And I noticed I was struggling a little bit with uh, my, my drawings in the last session. So if you guys are just chiming in, this is part 11. Yes, it's a long series. But it is, I am deciding to take you through my process of developing an animated pilot that we wrote from a script that we're trying to get picked up as a TV show. And I thought I would be, I don't think anyone else out there is doing this. So I wanted to be the first to kind of say, hey, look, I'm gonna take you through my process 
good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, if I make mistakes, I make mistakes. If I have a brain fart and I hit a wall, you're gonna watch it live. Um, you know, if I have bad drawing days like I did last week, you're gonna see that. But I, I just want you guys to kind of take you through and uh, the step by step of how I'm approaching this. And I also thought, you know, if this can inspire you guys to also do your own project, um, then that's fantastic because the idea is like we all have a voice, we all have a story to tell. And at Sketch to Animate, we want to make sure that you guys have all the tools necessary necessary to tell that story. So uh, I'm looking down here. Uh, Travis, you're live on Twitch now. Oh, sweet. Twitch is working. Fantastic. All right. I'm going to just uh, switch over there and see. How many people do we have on Twitch? Uh, I don't know how many people we have on Twitch. Uh, huh. Let's see. It says we're live. Okay, we'll, we'll figure it out. So, um, anywho, I'm back. So, I'm going to go ahead and if last, let's just let's, let's take it from the top, shall we? For those who are just starting. So, we're going through each page of the script. And we're doing you know around three to four panels per page to kind of give the beat board. Now again, um, if anyone is wondering why I keep referring to beat boards, beat boards are the simplified version, let's say, of storyboards. So when you have a script and you want to kind of block it out visually really fast, we use a thing called beat boards, which is we're hitting the broad beats of that particular page or sequence or situation. It's there to, to emphasize a mood, uh, possibly the, the camera uh, angle that or camera shots that you want to use. Uh, it's there to kind of give the broad strokes, if you will, of the overall script in a visual format as simplified as possible, which is going to be the foundation in which I will be able to then take those further for, uh, let's say, character designs, for my layout designs, for possibly prop designs. So it's giving me an opportunity to kind of do a broad strokes. And since I, like I've said before, have not been able to, um, I don't have any other artists with me that would be doing prop designs or backgrounds or layouts. I've got to do it all myself. So it's a lot of work. Um, it's, it's painstaking at times. It's like watching paint dry. But it's very rewarding to see the process, especially when you have breakthroughs creatively. So this is the opening uh, where we have the opening title and we have um, the, the ship that Ark is, uh, is, the, is the name of the ship that is about to take off into space. To, uh, and on the ship is all of these cryogenically frozen animals of every living, every living uh, animal on the planet, including insects, uh, and probably some plants and different things like that are on, on there as well, um, are on this ship to be sent off to a far off galaxy um, but unfortunately, the ship gets goes off course. Three of our the three heroes that we have on the ship are awoken prematurely, and now we follow them along through their this serial style adventure series where they are running amok in the spaceship, trying to figure out the big question of who, what, where, and why. What is my existence? What is my purpose? And where are we going? And so it's a comedy slapstick comedy adventure with our characters, Bo, the bull, Sue, the pig, and then we have Gallus, a rooster. So, oh, I'm looking over here real quick. I'm seeing, uh, <laughs> Grat says, yes, it's true. It's like watching paint dry. Oh yes, how true that is. Uh, Grat says, when, when I do my own project. Well, you know, it, it seems like that when we both, when any of us do our these big projects, it feels like you're not getting anywhere. But if you just have that stick to itiveness and that persistence, the persistence of vision and its stick to itiveness and to not give up, I'm stubborn. So no matter how long this takes me, I'm getting it done. That's just how I am. Um, you're going to see results. So the next page, again, is part of the opening title where we see the ship about to take off. And the one person that was supposed to run this ship to go off into space 
forgets to get on the ship. Of course, it's comedy, it's slapstick, and it's ridiculous. But he was in the bathroom after drinking a cup of coffee. And you see in this page right here, uh, the guys in the control center look back and see the bathroom door open. And our hero astronaut, would-be hero, opens the door. And you see the one guy with the yellow arrow push the button and the ship takes off. Whoosh! And then we have the opening title of ARC where it cuts to our three heroes zooming in. And then the title pops up, ARC. So now we go into the first episode and we see um, Gallus is being uh, in the testing room where he's testing G-Force. They're practicing for a landing on a new planet that they found uh, in hopes that they could inhabit that. And so he's practicing his, his G-Force. And the G-Force practice is, is basically Sue with a rope tied to a chair, spinning in a circle as fast as she can to uh, get him up to the G-Force speed. And, of course, we go through there, and he doesn't make it. And um, when he wakes up, he gets flattened like a pancake right here on the last panel. And then on the second page, it basically is this whole episode is setting up these characters, the comedy, the type of comedy that we're going to do. Um, Gallus is jumping on the Sue's head because he, in the script, they were talking about the instructional manual for being a great astronaut, Sue accidentally ate it while eating lunch. And so he makes a joke, you know, maybe if I ate it, I'll have more knowledge. So he jumps on her head, says, hey, what kind of knowledge do you have? It goes into this little funny tickle fest. And then Bo, who's the, the uh, bull, says, hey, I want to join in and smashes into them and they break through a wall, which introduces them to a new room that they never discovered, which is the engine room. So this is, again, a, a, a series of self-discovery. This, this spaceship is so huge that um, throughout the entire episode, we're just going to be exploring different parts of the ship while also going to different planets and, and meeting possibly potential extraterrestrial aliens along the way. And we're also going to be introducing new characters like we do in this episode, which is we these characters um, are baboons that are unfrozen to be test subjects, potential test subjects, for Bo and Sue so that they can test their G-Force um, machine that they had that they want to do to prepare for their landing. Again, we go through this whole thing and you see his G-Force meter there. And we have different flashbacks. Um, we talk about how in this, this one episode, there's a page of script on page four where we have a flashback. And Gallus is saying, hey, I don't want you to open, wake up any more uh, test subjects because you know what happens when you try to experiment with all of your new inventions that Bo creates. And then it becomes a series of flashbacks of all these mishaps that happen while Bo is trying to uh, create a new machine that gets more ridiculous as the flashbacks continue. So then, of course, they don't listen to Gallus, and they eventually unfreeze um, a couple of baboons because they think that since humans used chimps to test on them, that they should do the same thing. And so they did, and... This is when things go awry because then the baboons run amuck of the place. Everything they touch, every place that they go, they destroy. And uh, we have gotten to the point where we're now just getting them uh, introduced to Bo and Sue uh, and our two main characters, our secondary characters, which is Derek and Duroc. Uh, Duroc is wearing a hat. <clears throat> these two baboons uh, make friends with them, but all they want to do is party. That's all they want to do. They want to find the perfect place to set up shop, party, and basically run amok. So now we're at that place in the script where we've introduced Bo, uh, Derek and Duroc to Bo and Sue, and now they are re they've been introduced to Gallus, who was in the control room, and Gallus finds out um, that they are essentially um, in the room because he has a banana thrown at him. He falls off on his back. And 
we quickly introduce them destroying the 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 control or the the pilot's room, the the cockpit, if you will. And so now Gallus is freaking out and tell him to get them out of there. Don't let them explore any place. Don't show them anything cool. And then the next last page that we have is basically them going, hey, here's the engine room. This is one of our really cool places. And so the engine room is going to be the setting for um, the big event that happens that goes into the climactic part of the episode where the ship is on a collision course for the planet that they intend to land on. And because the baboons are in that room and start destroying it, everything goes red, the ship goes in high speed, bolting towards the planet, and now they have to figure out a way to stop the ship from uh, colliding and destroying everyone on the ship. So that's my long-winded kind of brief intro into what I've done so far. And now we're going to go into uh, the next few pages, which is I have, I think, five pages left to board out. Um, but I wanted to jump back into character designing a little bit because I'm not quite um, comfortable with the baboons yet. So I wanted to do a little warm up sketching with the baboons before I go back into my beat board. So I thought that would be fun. Nice departure from the last couple of live streams and we'll go from there. So, uh, let's see, I'm looking down here, um, just, just so you know, I'm doing this, I'm the one man band today, I've got to look at my chats, look at you guys, um, actually, let's see if I have, there is one, this is what I forgot to do, let's see if I, if I can do this, we've got a, uh, is it there? I, I did one where we had the chat room open up. Let's see if I can do that. Let's see if I can get that main chat. Chat with peeps. I've got all these little names in OBS. I want to make, make sure that I've got main chat. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. Um, oh, iPad with chats. And then there's see iPad with chats I have iPad with chats but I don't have iPad with TV paint so I'm gonna have to skip that for today and, and then I'll set up a new one where I'll have the chat room open up where we can still see your chats live as we're going in and drawing in TV paint so I'm just gonna look at some of the uh, uh, let's see let's see some of the chats I'm gonna go back up again uh, Okay, Life Fantasy says, I'm ready to watch some board beat boards today. Coconut says, Justice Awesome, can't wait. Okay. Uh, okay, hey, Scribbler 80 is on here. This is awesome. Sorry, sorry, I'm scrolling through. Druby, that sounds okay. You guys having your conversation. <laughs> I love how you guys can interact with each other on this. This is great. Um, Grat says, Yes, it's true. It's like watching paint dry. Uh, let's see here. Uh, where is my, f okay, fun question. I got one from Chad Fields. Chad Fields says, fun question. Do you plan on hiring voice actors or you do you plan to voice the characters yourself? Right now, what we're gonna show you is um, after I'm done boarding this, we're going to um, go into um, getting our own voices in there. We're, we have a few of our friends that do great voices. But uh, since we don't have the funding to hire actual voice actors to come in this, and since we kind of know the show pretty well ourselves, we're going to go ahead and do our own voices, get the best of the acting that we can, and then um, once we can see if anyone wants to pick up the show, or maybe we possibly fund the show ourselves uh, through you know some sort of fund site, uh, then we would go ahead and hire people to come in and do the voices in this. So, um, and that's one of the things that I want to do is I'm still trying to figure out the logistics of it, but I want to take us live um, during this live stream to actually do voiceover recording. So I actually want to take you through every process that I can possibly take you through and how I'm developing this because this is something that I would typically do in a bubble by myself, on my own, talking with my writing partners, building this as we go, and then we would just pitch it. But I thought, you know what, screw that. 
we're gonna we're gonna show it to you now live and take you through every step of the way if it's possible even if that means me getting in my rv social distancing myself getting all my equipment into my rv driving down to la and then remotely recording stuff down there. If I have to do it that way, I'll do it that way. If we can do it through uh, Zoom or any other methods, we'll do it through Zoom. But the idea is to take you through all that process. So, uh, let's see, I have someone talking in a different language that I do not understand. I apologize, that's uh, Nokulunga uh, Medala, Medela. Medaila. Um, and then Druby says, man, you, it's really getting cohesive. Love it. Are you going to be doing some animation for the pilot for, by yourself? Yes, I'll probably end up doing some animation for the, sh the pilot myself. If you haven't seen, I've done little loop animations for this. Like, here are our baboons currently that we're going to work on. Uh, these are the only drawings that I've done exclusively for them. So there's been hardly any um, development. I just wanted to get enough shapes a shape-based sort of language going that I can at least start doing my beatboards. But I still don't feel fully confident with them yet. And I noticed that as in my last session when I was drawing them. So what I like to do is go back into the, the design phase, draw them a little bit more so I'm a little bit more comfortable, and then come back into doing beatboards. Uh, Nate says, are there going to be different kinds of primates in later episodes like gorillas, chimps, or capuchins? Yes, there's going to be a lot. I mean, the, the, we've set up the show so that there'll be endless amounts of episodes uh, f for potential content using these animals. And so, and the great thing about having a variety of species of animals um, is we, we have an opportunity to tell new original stories either based on the characteristics of those, of those creatures living now living on this um, ship in the middle of space somewhere out in the, the distant far off galaxy. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of potential to build, world build in this show and to kind of take us. It's, it's sort of built with the idea that we can go anywhere um, and then we can introduce all these new characters and reintroduce characters as we go. And we're creating, we're creating a serial based type of show that do, is not episodic, meaning um, it doesn't have an overall story arc um, so understand that there are two different kind of rough, well, three different types of shows. Um, but you have a serial based show, which is like every episode is a self-contained story and doesn't connect in a linear fashion with the previous, uh, episode of the one after, uh, with, with a, uh, episodic type show, um, or maybe I'm doing, am I saying this backwards? Hopefully I'm not saying this backwards. Um, episodic is, <laughs> and I always get this backwards, but one idea is you have an, an overall story arc. The other idea is that you have each contained um, episodes that one doesn't affect the other, like for instance, SpongeBob, um, uh, the regular show, which is also a um, storyboard driven show and uh, places that would be like, have that overall arc would be um, Avatar or Korra, um, uh, The Last Dragon, you know, things that, that take you through that you have to watch from beginning to end in order to understand the concept of the show. So, um, and again, I apologize if I just screwed up my, my, my uh, definitions, but, um, and then you also have other types of shows, which are, are board-driven shows and script-driven shows. We are working on a script-driven show, which means I'm working off of a full script that gives me dialogue and everything. A board-driven show would be like an outline scenario of what the episode's going to be, and the storyboard artist has to write the dialogue in and, and kind of fill the blanks. And in conjunction with working with the head writer who will kind of like, you know, proofread and make sure everything's looking good um, but it's up to the story artist to also be a writer so i always say if you want to be a good story artist you got to be a good writer and you got to be a good storyteller uh, in order to uh, do both so uh, let's see here back to art 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 says look this looks amazing uh, michael says if you get 
get this picked up, up you will create uh, Seattle local or source out. Uh, the idea is to, um, with this, the new way things are going, is to have a base in Seattle uh, here. That would be the goal. Um, and then we would work um, remotely if possible. Like my writing partner's in LA, which is where I was living. Um, we would work remotely or if he loves Seattle, like that's this is one of his favorite places. So if this gives affords him an opportunity to move up here, I would of course like pull the rope in and reel him in up here if I could. Um, but knowing the logistics of things, animation guys is the one one production that's currently going on that you don't have to stop production because everyone can work remotely. It's very possible. It's happening. We're doing it. People are developing remotely. I work remotely. I've been doing it for three years. So animation as a whole, as a production, um, as long as you plan for your pre-production, your pipeline to be a remote pipeline, it is very possible to create a show without having to have everyone in-house. Now, it's still nice to have like a small crew um, like pre-production to have people in-house, but it's not necessary. And, it's, and, and they're doing it right now. Uh, studios are forced to work remotely and they're doing it successfully. DreamWorks is doing it. I have my friend Jack, who's, uh, who's an, uh, a head of animation for CG uh, or animation director and uh, if, hopefully, Jack, I'm saying that correctly. Um, his title, and Coconut Justice, you can let me know what his cool title is. Um, and he works for DreamWorks. And they're doing it successfully. And they're starting up new shows that they're just getting the ball rolling and they're having to do it remotely. So it's possible. And that's the great thing about this. That's why I chose to do this live. So um, without further ado... Let's get into this. I want to draw a couple of more poses of, of this guy. And you saw what I did earlier is I drew this, this sort of image of one of the baboons uh, here in my, uh, my beat board section. But we're going to go over to the baboons and we're going to go ahead and start just drawing a few more of these guys. So what I'm going to do is put, um, I don't know if it's going to show up. I'm going to go ahead and slowly lighten this up. Add another layer to this, and I'm going to go ahead and um, do above this <clears throat> some more poses because I imported these in because I don't know if they're going to show up if I did the onion skin. If I went on this layer and did my onion skin here, uh, I'll just add a new. Let's see here. There we go. If I add onion skin, will it appear? Let's see. Nope. Because it's a solid JPEG image, that's one of the things you guys gotta know, like in any kind of um, program that you're using. If it's line art, it's easy and it's just with an alpha with just a line, yeah, that'll come over. But if it's a solid shape or a solid color, even though there's an image there, it's gonna show up on your onion skin as blank. A lot of programs are like that. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and just to get used to these characters again draw over them and just kind of finesse them a little bit more um, and maybe throw in a couple more poses because we're going to really get into this part of the script is where we're going to start introducing not just these characters but there's a whole slew of baboons that are going to end up in the show for the climactic ending which is going to be a lot of work I, i'll be honest it's that whole scene uh with the final where they're trying to battle the baboons for control of the engine room is going to be a kind of a big epic moment. So we're going to have like 20 or 30 baboons. So I got to create like a generic baboon that I can kind of repurpose. And then I have to create uh, my two main characters. So again, uh, this one is Derek. Uh, Duroc is the one with the hat. He's the shorter one. Um, and Derek and Duroc, that's the kind of the funny is that you're constantly like, no, I'm Derek, I'm Duroc. You know, like the rock. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to go over again some of these characters and let's go a little bit darker here. Uh, let's see here. Duroc looks like he has so many regrets. <laughs> you know, I never thought about that, but maybe he does. Maybe his one regret is getting caught and frozen. Uh, that's his regret. Uh, let's see here. And again, this is a spoof comedy. So, you know, we're going to we're we're trying to play a lot off of 
what's going on in science today, um, the things that can actually occur, and kind of, you know, like being monkeys, being test subjects. Of course, I'm, a, I'm an animal advocate, uh, animal rights activist, um, you know, just for, for uh, saving our planet, saving our wildlife. But it's also funny to kind of make fun of what people are doing. I mean, uh, having these baboons and the, the animals thinking that they can use them as test subjects, but the f irony is they're not. And they quickly tell you that they're not. And they, uh, that's why we want them to kind of run amok of the place. Uh, it's sort of almost like, you know, science or technology versus animals. And the ship, by the way, I've got my coffee. The ship, by the way, is also a, sort of a sentient being. It has a mind of its own. Think of 2010. Um, so we've got that aspect going as well. So let's go. The shape, the shape that I had these guys in, if I'm on the wrong layer, I am on the wrong layer is uh, sort of like I've got, um, where is it? I, I'll, I'll pull that one up again. Where are you here? Um, here we go. Oh. I'll bring that up a little bit more. So you see the shape at the top. Um, I'm trying to create wedge shape uh, language or style for all of the characters. Um, I've kind of introduced that sort of shape language with the three main characters, and I'm kind of see how I can incorporate that as well with these characters. It helps me in terms of designing when I'm blocking things out to keep things consistent. So um, I'm trying to keep shape language consistent as well. So let's knock that back down. And I just want to have fun and draw a little bit more of these guys because um, the one thing that is going to be important for this script for this story is the emphasis on the red bear butts if you haven't noticed uh if i can pull this up i'll pull it up in a little bit baboons are have bear butts bear derriers um and then they have it's literally bear here and then the rest of it is fur but i want to kind of create simple shapes that i can I can use and uh, bend and storyboard quickly. And so the whole purpose of me designing these characters in simple shapes and forms was for the purposes of storyboarding uh, the initial characters. And I've said this before, once we get a show picked up, we would bring in other artists um, that are, uh, you know, their specialty is character designing and really kind of home in and really give their best towards uh, putting putting out some really cool characters. I, I mean, I draw well, but you know, I'm not the end all be all. And I certainly know there's a lot of people that can draw better than me that I would love to, if they like the project, first and foremost, they gotta like the project and be on board for it. Um, but secondly, it's, it's great to work in collaboration with others because you can produce so much more, so much more creativity can come out of that process. Um, things that you may not have thought about that someone else thinks about you know, really adding to the table of the creative process for this is, that's why I love animation so much because it allows that collaboration to happen. So I'm, I'm just simply going in here trying to reacquaint myself with what I initially drew. And um, these guys, you know, they have long hair in the back. If you've ever seen real baboons, um, they, the, there's different, they all have, there's different features. There's different types of baboons as well. Um, but the baboons all have similar features, which is like this big hair that kind of poofs out. Uh, it almost reminds me of, uh, this comedian. I remember when I was a kid growing up that smashed balloons. I couldn't remember his name, but his, he had, he was bald on the top, but he had hair off the side and he had, a, and his beard, um, Oh, gosh, if I can't remember his name, guys, Coconut Coconut Justice, you'll probably remember him. Um, let's see here. I'm seeing if anyone else is on here. Uh, oh, I see a whole bunch here. Um, Alice says, if this is picked up by Disney, would Rafiki make a cameo in Pilot? Uh, you know what? <laughs> That would be funny if Disney actually did it. I, I doubt, I don't know, I doubt Disney, Disney would want to pick this up. I don't know. But um, 
it would be funny if Rafiki was one of the miscellaneous Frozen uh, in the backdrop as sort of like a cameo. Like you just see that one, it's like a hidden gem back there where he's frozen holding a stick or maybe he's holding, <laughs> he's holding a young, a young uh, Simba. Who knows? Um, so I'm just going to go in and figure out that shape again. I have, again, this wedge sort of design happening with the, the almost like mutton chops for this, their side of their cheeks. And I wanted to create a, a very thin uh, snout uh, because they are, they are similar to that. And him, again, more squared off. And for Derek, I want him to be a little bit longer feeling and then Duroc more squatty or wider. So um, his face is gonna be a little bit rounder. Um, they will have, you know, I'll just, I'll try to keep the traditional kind of like fang teeth that they, they have for their canines. And then um, a squared off like brow, they have a very prominent brow, um, baboons do, and a very uh, short forehead that sits back and then their ears. And then from there, you know, you have your hair that kind of comes out. So I'm, I'm thinking about how I'm going to consistently draw these guys for my storyboards as I move forward. Again, if you just kind of chiming in at the moment, I am going back into my character designs for Duroc and Derek to kind of get more comfortable with them so I can get more used to drawing these baboons. And, I'm, and what I'm doing is I'm just doing another quick draw over trying to redefine these shapes um, and then really figure out what my shape language is for these guys so that I can bring them back into uh, my boards and continue moving forward. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with Derek, I'm sorry, with uh, Gallus and Bo uh, doing those guys because I've drawn them so much. And I think I might want to do like an animation test of them running around. Sometimes they'll be on two legs walking. Sometimes they'll go into primal mode and they'll be on four legs running around, which they typically are uh, as baboons. Let's see, uh, Jorge says, oh, Mary Beth says, hey, I'm late working on gestures for my live stream. From a live stream, so much work needed. <laughs> no worries, Mary. Uh, I'm happy to see you on here. Um, we're just going back into designing my uh, baboons at the moment to kind of get used to those guys and I'm thinking for the hands you know I want to I want to create this sort of simple almost like fluid uh, uh, long elongated paper like thin uh, where I can just quickly draw that in and then the lower part will be the thumb keeping the thumb lower and that would be maybe the hand um, you know, how would that look broken up? You know, if his hand, one of the fingers opens up, you know, and the other, the other fingers are kind of together. Um, but the idea is keeping the hands long, like our hands are, and then basically the fingers come out to here. Still having that baboon primate style uh, design, but at the same time, keeping it as simple as possible. And, you know, again, when, when it comes to working on these characters it's up to you if you're doing this independently how you want to design it but you don't have to be right on model with like a realistic baboon you can take liberties of your own and figure out ways to stylize it to make it a baboon feel but still make it kind of like your own hybrid that's what cartooning is that's what designing is characters for 2d animation is you know we're here to experiment and explore and kind of um if we just drew realistically i think it would get, be boring it's better to have you know to push those design aspects and this is where we can kind of stand out from the crowd as individual artists to kind of put our own stamp or style in the look and feel of our own characters so that's that's sort of the the hand that i'm thinking of um size wise uh you know if we looked at it from the side uh it would probably be pretty thin and i maybe have a break here and here and then uh the, the fur and then the, the the finger would be like right there now i haven't really looked at a lot of other artists 
Uh, sometimes when I have a, a sort of a, a drawing block, I like to draw and look at other artists and designers to see how they've approached certain things because it helps me to see what they're thinking, how they're th taking a shape and, and repurposing, repurposing that shape for their own um, to simplify things. So, um, Brigadier, I'm just going over here every now and then. Alice says, uh, Jorge says to me, haha, that would be funny. Oh, oh, Jorge goes, uh, let's see, or in the pose of holding Simba, but instead of Simba is sign saying, don't feed the lions. Okay, yeah, that's kind of funny, Jorge. Uh, Brigida Kumo, Kuomo says, how did you learn to draw? Um, I learned to draw by by, well, you know, I have an older brother named Aaron, uh, who you guys probably already know, and Aaron has his own live stream. We started drawing at a pretty young age. Um, I would say, you know, I was, the moment I could pick up a pencil I was drawing, um, my stepmom still has uh, artwork of ours from when we were seven and nine. And I, I told the story, it's like, we lost a lot of our artwork growing up in a fire uh, many, many years ago uh, from when we were kids, from 16, from when we were born to 16 years old is when that, we kind of lost everything. I was 16 when that happened. But my stepmother still has artwork that my brother and I did uh, from when we were living with her when we were at the age of seven and nine. I was in kindergarten, or six and, and, and uh, eight. I was in kindergarten uh, in Vermont and Aaron was uh, in second grade so he's two years ahead of me so we were basically um, drawing and I guess she has one it's really funny I have I'm drawing fish right and my fight uh, okay if you will um, let's see if I could draw this really quick so my my image of this fish look like uh, I'm gonna go there the image of of my fish look like um, a dot with you know kind of squiggly guys jumping over the water and I just had like in color I have this this water and then I have like uh, I think I had like a Sun in the back and some clouds and it looked like a typical seven-year-old drawing uh, seven-year-olds drawing or six-year-old six-year-olds drawing I kind of laughed because it said it looked like little little sperms jumping out in the, out of the water and jumping over. And then you go to Aaron's, and then Aaron literally had this, and this is him at eight years old. The literally a duck. Uh, we had a duck that looked like this, and he was in the water. And um, I'm trying to remember the image in my head, and he had perspective going. I mean, he had. He had a foreground element with, with weeds growing, and then he had uh, uh, reeds in the background, and then um, and he was drawing birds at this age. So if that gives you an indication of Aaron liking wildlife. And then uh, it, was, it was literally like already in perspective. He had this depth to it that was pretty amazing. So he was drawing so good at a young age. And where I was, you know, I was a late bloomer. So um, this is where I talk about persistence in art. If you're persistent and you practice and you really are driven, you're gonna improve. And even though um, you know throughout my high school I didn't take it as seriously, I, I I I buckled down, I doubled down, I guess if you will, and I and I went and I really worked hard to kind of improve my drawing skills. And eventually that got me into Disney. So we'll go back to drawing baboons. And erase these guys so I have room to draw. So, uh, uh, Mary Beth says, any suggestions on animal gestures finding? I need to really understand their anatomy that I thought I knew, lol, something to learn. Um, go to the zoo when you can. Um, just watch a lot of um, videos. Really study, as you watch the videos, also look up structure anatomy. L really look at understanding what's underneath the skin because it's gonna be really important for when you draw proportions and shape language designs to understand how the, 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 the hind leg looks, especially like with the baboons. You know, baboons have a, a particular look. Um, they have this butt and this tail that sort of 
kind of juts up and comes around. And um, they have a bone structure, like so. And they have a chest. Uh, and they have a forearm. And then they have this, this neck and skull that's sort of flat and elongated. Um, that kind of comes in like this. And based on my research of the baboon, I can then start building my shape language over that. So it's really good to understand um, the language of the anatomy, the structure underneath. And your structure underneath doesn't have to be too complicated. I like to go realistic and then simplify and kind of build, draw, 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 until I find the shape that I like. So you're constantly seeing me do this type of uh, drawing that I'm doing now, which is doing my drawovers of my existing character so that I can get more comfortable with uh, drawing him. Let's see, uh, I'm going to go back into that pencil. There we go, that's where I wanna be. I wanna have that. I'm gonna amp up the percentage on the power and opacity so it's a little bit more opaque. There we go, I like that. So based on like, let's say this simple design, um, even in this simple shape design, if I wanted to, I could, I could kind of give you a rough idea of uh, anatomically what this cartoon version of a baboon could look like if it was just bones. Um, and I could just draw like so. And then of course his thumb and his long fingers. And then his his neck uh, vertebrae versus his uh, where his ear would go and where his eyes would go right here and then his nose and then their teeth all right then he has a pronounced eyebrow uh, with their with their and if it was a cartoon version of that I would just simply draw something like this and he would have his vertebrae and then his hip would be somewhere in here and then he would have a shorter leg uh, I'd probably drop his legs down a little bit more and then his tail would be just a series of vertebrae that taper out. So you can draw simply um, any structure, any bone anatomy you can create underneath. And what that really does is it helps you to see where your, your hard points are, the hard edges for your design. Even if this is, a, you know, I draw the super cartoony, this is where your straights would happen, you know, where they're meeting your elbow and then you would have your curve. So you have straights against curve concept that they always talk about. You straight, straight where that this bone is right here. That straight against curve is based off of looking at real anatomy and designing from there and figuring out a shape language that is based on research of real human anatomy. And so you got that straight against curve, which is um, that that um, bone here that you have. You have two bones that run through your forearm. That one that's more prominent, which is where your 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 wrist is that one that one part right here that you can see with the bone that would be like your straight and then your curve would be the muscle part which would be the under part of your your arm so that straight against curve concept comes from just studying um, real anatomy and then coming up with their own kind of language that's what I was saying is like once you you study from other artists how they approach design then you can extrapolate if you will other people's um, ideas and then go in and make it kind of your own which is which is the great thing about evolving style uh, in character designing um, let's see I just see Travis uh, Joe Root says Travis can you import the JPEG drawing run scan cleaner as if it's scanned on paper drawing in and then should have a transparency that could be used for yes you could do that I think Actually, in TV Paint, you could be able to do that, but I don't really need to worry about that. There is a way where you scan things in, um, 
in TV Paint, and there's a tutorial on that. If you go to TV Paint, um, they have a tutorial that I think Aaron does that talks about how you can bring in traditional artwork, uh, reg it, especially if you animate it traditionally on paper, you can uh, bring it in, um, clean it up, make it look like it has a transparency, and then also with your registration marks that you scan in from your paper, it will register it. So go check that out if you get a chance to go to TV Paint, uh, and they have a little tutorial that Aaron did that's on that. Um, let's see. Wow, Alice says, "Wow, that's pretty cool. Your step, your stepmom saved your drawings. Yes, she did. That was pretty awesome." Um, so what I'm trying to do now is figure out. Um, I've got a, a small shape for the butt, and I want that butt to kind of have a heart uh, design to it. So wherever. Uh, the character is and that and you're always gonna have like a little tuft that comes out and then it bends for the tail so wherever whatever angle we're at um, I want to be able to to kind of design that idea that you the butts always showing just a little bit so um, if that's his butt and let's say uh, his he's running um, and also, I've designed the the far, the, I guess the hind leg, to kind of have this sort of shape, which is um, just one simple solid shape, which is basically his their hair. If I go over to again, guys, use real look at real anatomy for the the purpose of this, and then I'm going to see if I can pull up the baboons. Where are you, baboons? Again, let's talk about baboons. Since we're on the subject, I'll keep this up here small so you can kind of see uh, for each preview as I, I go through and draw this. But the baboons have sort of uh, an interesting elongated mouth. They're very unique uh, in terms of characters. Like I said, you know, that hair, really prominent forehead, uh, hair that tufts out to the side, and then the elongated uh, uh, snout with their nostrils sort of very small in the front. Um, they're just very unique features, which is uh, is great for designing. Um, almost has this sort of human-like quality to them. Um, again, I've shown this before. These are, things, these are things that I pulled off the internet because I don't have access. Um, I didn't buy any, um, I don't, I might have a book on primates somewhere, but I don't think it has baboons in it. So I went ahead and, and looked at baboons. Oh, that's not that's not what we want. Uh, we want more baboons. Let's see where are they. I think I have some down here. Here we go. It's really cool just to look at their expressions um, to see how they are. Like you know, if I was to draw something like that, and of course, it's as soon as I hit my uh, TV paint, it's going to disappear. But I'm just going to look at that for a moment, and now I'm going to capture it. And I'm going to say for expression, and we're going to use him for Duroc. Let's go ahead and have uh, Duroc right here. And Duroc's mouth is a little bit rounder, so. Every now and again, you'll probably hear garbage trucks going by. I'm, I'm surprised I haven't heard our landscaper guy show up yet. He's always showing up around this time, doing his landscaping across the street. You typically hear the, the, the uh, blower going. Let's see here. And again, I have this sort of I want to keep this a, a really simple shape because as I said earlier, as you're designing characters for a particular project or TV show, you also want to design not just make a really cool looking design, but you want to create a design that's efficient for animation. Meaning you have to design to design as if you're working with a team. 
because if you're the only one that can design this character uh, efficiently and have it look consistent, then it's not gonna it's not gonna work when you go into a production setting when no one else can draw it quite like you. So you want to create a a design language that is a that is something that everyone can uh, draw efficiently, and especially if you go overseas. Uh, for production, let's say you send it to Malaysia or if you send it to the Philippines or wherever other studios you have I my friend has a studio in China. You got to make sure that um, That the the art uh, The artists that are working at that studio can handle this style of production um, In terms of design and look and feel that you want so it's always important to really think about who's gonna have a uh, who's going to end up drawing this and producing this ultimately and making sure that that, you know, studio can work. A lot of times, like DreamWorks and other places, um, they'll have tests that they send out to other studios and those two studios will test to see if they can produce the quality that um, DreamWorks or Disney or, <clears throat> excuse me, anyone else is looking for. So... Let's pull him back up again, see if we... Yeah, kind of, you know. It's it's just that he's an interesting character, um, Duroc. And again, these guys are always destroying things, so no matter where they are, uh, they're destroying um, pretty much everything around them. So I'm going to just do a couple more drawovers I'm just exploring right now. These these things for me are just trying to take the existing shapes that I have and seeing where I can push them more. Especially if they're gonna be um, you know, yelling or screaming. Uh, it's good to push their shapes uh, for expression um, and always look at the script when you're doing this. Make sure that you're following a, the script storyline. That's gonna also help you decide on how you push your poses and how you push your character design because your your script is gonna dictate uh, the limitations or, or the how far you're supposed to push these characters for that particular moment. Um, so the story is very important through the designing phase of anything that you do. Um, that's why I always say story comes first, no matter what, no matter what you're doing, whether you're doing backgrounds, you're doing layouts, you're doing character designing. Um, always understand that story uh, is is the the vehicle in which we're we're designing these characters for. Um, I'm kind of liking the idea of simplifying uh, when they're running to kind of keep keep it almost like one shape for those feet. Um, and again, I have thicker in the top. Maybe even, um, like I said, I have this character, the legs are sort of like this. Maybe, uh, what do they look like when they're bent? So that's where I'm kind of exploring the idea of what they look like when they're bent in terms of shape language. Um, and this, this is this trial by fire right now. I'm just kind of going in it, diving into it and seeing what, what works, what doesn't work. And you guys are here watching me draw and ramble at this moment i'm looking over uh, oh kirk michael says hey hi travis how you doing buddy doing good um let's see mary beth says their expressions are great are uh, as their as their body language so cool well thank you very much i greatly appreciate that but the the key is to really get comfortable uh with drawing these characters so that i can um, with confidence move forward with, with my uh, beat boards and then ultimately my storyboards. So um, it's good to kind of like, again, uh, have reference. So I, I pulled a bunch of reference, like I said before, of Baboons. I have a lot more reference that I look at that I'll end up looking at more again. And I just kind of like to look at things and see what I can simplify. And again, you see hair all over except for their butt and you can see that their butt and their mouth their their, their muzzle and face area which is very interesting um, their chest also has shorter hair as well 
but it's covered up by this like tuft of hair that they have. Um, beautiful photo. I love that photo. Oh, let's go back to that. And then um, one more. Let's see if we got one more. There's a cool one, just showing his mouth opening up. Again, you know, you can take those those shapes and look at it compared to what you're, I'm currently doing to kind of see where okay, this I don't like this a lot, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go in here and fix this shape and look at this one more time. I'm not afraid to to erase things and start over because I draw so fast that I. Um, Sometimes I draw too fast and I'll just have to keep drawing over my art. So there's a there's a really cool shape language going on, especially because they have such a low forehead and and their their eyebrows are really predominant. Their brow is really predominant. Um, and it, it makes for just a fun shape language like this, like I have down here, where you can you can have the eye. And then the brow can literally come right out, almost like it's part of their their eyelid itself. I'm gonna shrink that down just slightly. Bring that in. Let's zoom in on this so we can draw this a little bit in more detail. And again, I'm draw I'm talking and drawing and trying to kind of uh, give a little bit of lesson as I'm doing this as well, so that you can kind of see my process. That's this is. One of the reasons why this is probably taking a little bit longer than normal for me to get to the beat board phase is because I want this to also be instructional and hopefully answer questions when I can uh, to help you guys along the way as you're building your own projects. Oh, nice truck went by. And again, I love uh, their, their hair, um, which is pretty awesome. That goes on the side of their head. I, I'm thinking for this that I like the idea that the hair comes down like this and then I have this shape here. This is getting a little bit more realistic in terms of uh, the shape itself. So I'm, I'm again trying to think how I can really get it down to minimal line quality, a little, little minimal line while still retaining the look and feel of a baboon. And then if I go too far, bring it back, maybe a little bit slightly more detailed. But it's a combination of going simple to more complicated, simple to more complicated, till finally you have something that's generally working uh, for you. Now, I'm looking at the shape of this right now. If this head was there, and his neck was there, his shoulder would be somewhere up here, then maybe, um, I'll drop that down a little bit more. That might work a little bit better for me in terms of its proportion. It's nice to go back and look at these after you've drawn something initially and say, oh, you know what? Maybe I need to drop that proportion down a little bit more to kind of help uh, with the look and feel of this. So hand. Uh, maybe just bring his elbow up just slightly right there. Uh, see, Kirk Michael says I like how primates. Uh, I like how primates, especially. I'm not sure what you're saying. Oh, I like your baboon. Gotcha. Um, oh, I have a new person here. Mister Abator says, uh, "Hey, hello. Can we?" Can can we find who a character is is by by finding its his overall shape? For example, a triangle shape for villains, square for strong character, round shapes. Yes, um, it's really what it comes down to is is your your language for that particular production. If you say in your production that all villains have sort of that design of triangular shape um, with a straighter edge feel, and that's all you're in within that world that you're creating all sort of villains have that, then that's that's the rule that you've set for your design. Um, again, this is a cartoon, so you can you can create any rules that you want 
um, but just be consistent with it as you move forward in any kind of production or short film that you're doing. Um, consistency is, is important. That's why I'm going in right now and I'm still in exploration phase of this character. So nothing is set in stone, but I'm also trying to figure out how I'm going to uh, create this character consistent enough that it allows me to storyboard it out. So again, like I said before, if I had someone who uh, eventually would come over and take over as a character designer, I would be more than happy to uh, welcome any designer to come in and, and, and improve on what I've done and make it even better. Um, as long as it, it strengthens the overall look and feel of the show and the story points that we're trying to put in the show, then um, that's the beauty of working with other artists is to kind of, we all have a vision of making the best show it can possibly be visually and according to the story. Excuse me, I'm just burping up a little coffee there. So I'm not quite sure if I'm, I'm liking, um, we'll go back bigger, uh, trying to keep what is going to be a proportion that works and what isn't going to be a proportion that works. I'm going to erase this guy because I don't like this. I'm going to go back over to what I drew. It's funny, when I initially drew like this, I had five minutes to draw something. So I drew this in five minutes just to get it out there. And what I found is when I did that, I was a little bit freer in terms of what I wanted to do with my gesture. Um, and there's something interesting about this that I liked. So I'm gonna grab, see what layer is that one? I'm gonna grab this guy right now. And I'm gonna copy, cut to, or copy to brush. I'm gonna bring it over. Now I have it, oh, wrong layer. Let's go back again and do that. Um, I want the line layer and I want to go ahead and cut that to copy that to a brush. Now let's go back into um, a new section here. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Extend that out and we'll do another one and I'll put it right in here. Um, oh, I see what I did wrong. Uh, so we got this. He's right at the top. That's why I messed up. I had him on another layer. Copy to brush. Now let's bring it. There you go. Now I have him. Okay. So there's something really interesting and cool about this guy. So I'm going to put him here and see if I can't uh, sort of recreate something based on that design and then go back out of this. Again, let's look at the, t I'm looking at the time. It's 1225. Uh, you are helping so, okay. Uh, let's see, Gratz says, I'm in, I'm LOL. I love character design too. I'm working on mine and doing anatomy as well. You are helping so much. Oh, you're welcome. Um, again, trying to find consistency. These two characters, the shape language is one is shorter than the other, and then I have to kind of create in between them a lot of generics. So, um, you know, uh, typically what you want to do is possibly uh, one one way if you have multiple characters and you don't want them to look the same is you create let's say three varying styles of uh, a baboon. So you have your two main or two you have your two main characters draw them and then do three varying styles of other baboons and then from there you can change up those baboons by changing um, maybe just a slight variant variation in their colors if you don't want if you if the the joke is you kind of all want them to look the same then um, then you make them you know you just make those three styles and you re repurpose them to kind of give more more variances of baboons without having them all look exactly the same. Or the joke could be that they're all clones, so they all look the same. And that's something that we could always discuss in the story part of this is like, hey, wouldn't it be funnier if we have these two main characters and then these two main characters decide to make clones of themselves um, to repurpose uh, and then they have, and they end up making like a bunch of clones, or they find um, 
cloned uh, baboons that just basically look the same. So that's that's that that could be a joke in itself. So this is Derek, and then Derek has a very short forehead, and then hair that pops out in the back, and then the shoulders again are right here. His neck, I got to create some kind of neck. Like if his neck was right there, this would be maybe a good spot to kind of place his neck. And then his, he's a little longer, so his chest would come in. And I'm almost treating this this shape almost like uh, a parka, I guess, if that's or a poncho. Um, style almost feels like it's draped over him. Because that's kind of how they, that, to me, that's kind of how they, they look. If you look at uh, this guy right here, he kind of feels like he's wearing a, almost an outfit on top. Um, look at that one. That one's this beautiful, beautiful creature. But it feels like they're wearing some sort of like parka or some kind of uh, wool thing that they've just stuck over them. And again, you can see how low their forehead is, uh, or their, their their skull, their cranium that kind of sets back. Because we're not, like us, we're we're flat faced, but there there's more jutted out. So the, just imagine the cranium set back, and then their eyes are set in and moving forward. So go back in, and let's say if I wanted to have his arm out, what would his arm look like out? And make that more uh, hair like this. And remember his his uh, his hands. I want them to be sort of long-ish. But I've got to create this so that other people can draw it as well. Um, it'd be great to see if you guys have designs out there. Like I know there's really good designers out there. Um, if you guys want to give a stab at these guys. Go for it. You know, I'm okay with that. Um, I'm still going to draw draw what I'm drawing here. But um, it'd be great to, to have someone, um, you know, it's always really cool to see other people draw, like, you know, fan art of, of, like, Gravity Falls. I don't do fan art, but I love, when I really get hooked on a show, I'm hooked. And, um, like, again, I could watch... Uh, Avatar, and I don't know why I'm so obsessed with Avatar, but I could watch Avatar like all the time and never get sick of it. I, I don't. I think it's a combination of the writing and how they they made the characters funny and endearing at the same time, and then that whole uh, story arc with him trying to learn all of the uh, earth, wind, and fire and water elements to kind of defeat the villain at the end. Uh, I just found that really hero, that hero's journey is always something that, as a kid growing up, I was fascinated with. All right. I feel like that, and I still have that butt. Still need to have that butt aspect in there. But, 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 all right. Long arms, eh. I feel like this character could be more like this guy, for sure. And let's bring him in. I feel like. I'm, again, I'm just having fun figuring out the language of these the shapes, especially with his hands. I don't know why I like his hands so much, I like drawing those, but it's really fun to explore. This is the best part, I think, about <laughs> development is just exploring shapes without any feeling pressured to, to necessarily have to find the full answer right there off the bat. Exploration is, is a really fun 
Uh, it's tedious at times, but it's really rewarding when you finally hit something. And again, for me, I'm not. It's not as easy for me. I have to really work hard at it, and really kind of focus on um, and draw all over and over again to kind of find the shape language that I'm comfortable with. Uh, oh, we have somebody named Inkbrow Tattoo and Art say hello, hello to you there. Uh, happy to see you join. Uh, we have Life Fantasy X. Are you talking about Avatar? Uh, made me rewatch re it for two days straight. Uh, you talking, oh, you talking about Avatar. Yeah, Avatar is now free on Netflix. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm getting a little bit, I find like that shape seems to work really well um, with him. The Again, this the difference between this guy, Derek, and this guy, Derek, is going to be really the size and the width and then his muzzle. I feel like I want to make... Um, his muzzle just more round uh, his, his nostril, his bridge of the nose and his jaw uh, the jaw basically comes down here but because we have uh, the sideburns they'll come out like that and so you don't really see the jaw but the jaw is there so structurally when they open up their mouth you want to be able to to feel that that jaw opening. Let's see. Uh, Citizen Zero, hey there. Did you know that Durak? Or Dorak on the Russian mean uh, on, in Russian means crazy. No, but hey, that's that kind of fits crazy. I would say, I, I would say yeah, that's that's a that's a good that would be a good um, perfect kind of analogy for or metaphor for these guys that you know meaning the hidden meaning behind Dorak is crazy. Um, the other thing is questioning, like, how do I approach the eyes? Do I make the eyes more like, a, a, you know, your typical uh, eyelid um, and then overlap, which is kind of like what I'm doing with the other guys. Uh, and their eyebrow would be always prominent. Like that. Um, see for me it's again it's it's the more you draw the characters you start to see the design or the shape elements coming out and like I'm I'm kind of liking this this sort of shape of the eye that I have currently with with Duroc so I might just keep that um, and then what I like to do again to kind of find the, the shapes is uh, do a little tone, a quick tone. Again, this guy, he's gonna be a little bit wider. So his shoulder may be here. The other shoulder will be somewhere here. His neck will be here, you know, somewhere in, in this area. And then his chest line. And then his, the break of his back, like the lower part of the back right there, like right here before the butt comes up. And again, I like the idea of the tail coming up, breaking, and then doing a little S curve. So I always have that kind of, that feel for the tail to keep it consistent. Uh, shade and light. Yes, shade and light is very important when you, you want to kind of define characters. It's great to draw them like this, um, but I want to go in and, and kind of finesse them a little bit more and, and kind of give them a little bit more volume. Um, doing the right amount of light and tone for these characters is, is really nice and important to have. Now, I'm not worried about the color so much, but um, if I was to draw these guys right now, maybe I can do like a little color exploration over this these two drawings that I'm doing now to kind of give it a little demonstration there when I approach K 
character or character designing, I tend to approach it with a local color, a, a shadow tone, uh, uh, then a highlight, and then I'll throw in another shadow tone over that with a, on an alpha channel with a transparency on it. And then um, that just allows me to have a quick look and feel. Uh, I don't like those feet are too. Oh, well, maybe his feet should be bigger. I have them pretty big down. They seem to work. But I'm just wondering if that's too big. Uh, that, that could work. You know, his knee, if his knees, you know, their knees would be somewhere in there. Uh, let me shrink that brush down so I can erase that better. I'm hoping, I was hoping I was during this live stream, I was, I just ordered a bunch of prints of work, artwork that I did, that I've posted. I'm having a little mini art show um, at my local brewery. Um, even though they're not open, they still wanted to have artwork up. And, you know, I, they're friends of mine and I said, hey, I'll just give you some artwork. So, and I, it gave me an excuse to get some, some of my own prints made. So I went ahead and printed five pieces that I'm going to uh, hang in their their brewery, uh, just to kind of support the local community. Uh, there's no price tags on them or anything like that. I just wanted to kind of do it for fun. Um, never really had an art show anyways, believe it or not, in all my years, oop, I've never actually had an art show. So um, yeah, I thought it would be fun just to do that. And, but I'm looking forward to the prints because I do them through Costco and believe it or not, Costco is, is a wholesale warehouse in the United States. Um, they do a fantastic job on the prints. I was really impressed. So I, I've been doing all my canvas prints. So I'm taking my digital art and putting them on canvas um, and their quality has been fantastic. So, and you probably could see it by uh, the, the posting that I did of my octopus illustration that I did for the website that's in there. Um, on my website, or uh, actually that's the, the photographs are somewhere on my previous postings in Facebook. Uh, Citizen Zero says, do you do traditional painting? Um, I have in the past. I have not done that in years. Um, I love actually watercolor. If, if anything, uh, for, tr for traditional painting, I prefer to, to, to do watercolor. Um, partly because it's fast and it's effective and it's simple. Um, I like that transparency building color and you have to think opposite. You have to go um, light to dark versus dark to light, which you can do with like oils or acrylics. So there's that aspect. And also the texture of the, the, the paper and the quality of what you're trying to get. You can go as loose or as detailed as you want. And if you've seen any of the stuff that Aaron's done, you can see how far, um, well, you, just there's so many wonderful watercolors that are out there. I tend to go more cartoony uh, with a lot of the things that I do, but um, I can draw realistic if I want to. Maybe at some point I'll have, I'll draw some kind of um, realistic uh, portrait or painting just so you guys can see. Because I was actually trained, um, academically speaking, I was trained uh, in a traditional studio or a, a school. I went to Ringling School of Art and Design, same as Aaron, and you know, just learned all the traditional painting and anatomy and figure drawing. Um, and I'm glad that I had that training because that training is what uh, um, got me the internship at Disney. So that's why Aaron, if you hear about me or Aaron or any, any other artists that have been classically trained, uh, or um, we always push the idea that you have to learn um, anatomy. You have to learn to, uh, it's good to have those fundamental skills down, uh, when you go back, when you go into a career like animation, um, because that's, that's why they hired us is because we had that training, uh, and it allowed us to be, become better, um, animators and artists. I think, I feel like it doesn't hurt to have that, that skill set for sure. See, 
eyebrow, keeping it more angular, um, and then bring that back. There you go. I like that. Um, if you guys have any other questions, by all means, go ahead and holler. Um, if you want to know more about, like, right now, again, what I'm doing is I'm approaching, I'm redrawing these characters to kind of get more comfortable with it. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, board, doing beat boards here in about 15, 20 minutes. Um, I'm trying to kind of find a nice shape language with these characters so that I can feel comfortable in moving forward with uh, my designs. There's an ear. See, I'm already looking at this in a different perspective, seeing what would I see if it was a three-quarter back. Um, you know, at some point, I might get like somebody like, I'll see if Jack would like to come online at some point and maybe talk a little bit about his experiences in production because he's currently working for DreamWorks. Uh, TV and he's he's actually kind of a it's kind of a big deal I don't know if he wants to talk about it but he is kind of a big deal um, but he's he's been we found out through uh, learning about each other uh, through Carlos at uh, Sketch Zone that um, we worked for the same company at the same time but in different locations I was in Florida and he was in in uh, LA so we found that we had some common ground there to talk about um, having been in the industry for as long as we have been in. Um, so that was really neat to kind of get to know him. And what's great is I've gotten to know these guys and haven't, we've never physically met, which is, which is kind of cool. So I think we might plan a, uh, a, a social distancing trip at some point in the near future. Um, I know that I realize now that I've got my RV out front, I literally pulled my RV out, got it, got it maintenanced, my annual checkup. And now um, I'm good to go. I can go social distance myself anywhere in the country. Instead of flying, I can just drive, which uh, I find something uh, kind of liberating, that idea. Although I can't take an RV across, <laughs> across the continent. Uh, that would be a little expensive. I wish I could just create a boat Drop, drop that into a boat, drive over to, let's say, Ireland or uh, some other country and just travel in an RV. There's something really fun uh, about doing that. And it's funny. It's like it wasn't until I got into my, my older years that I started appreciating uh, the RV kind of experience. And now I know why you have a lot of retirees in the United States, at least, that like to to, to kind of pack their bags and go mobile. Uh, they get to see the world, or at least they're, they're outside of their own town. Uh, let's see here, okay. Alice says, have you and Aaron thought of doing a paint off with watercolor or something like that? Um, no, because Aaron would win. Aaron, Aaron's much better at it than I am. No, but we are thinking, of, I have it, an idea in my head that I pitched to Aaron, Nick and Aaron that would involve you, Alice, you, uh, Kirk, you, Citizen Zero, all of you guys that are out there. It would involve everyone that's been watching me, everyone that watches Aaron. Um, I have an idea that I want to do that I'm really excited about, and I'm hoping that I can get Aaron on board. It really comes down to getting Aaron on board uh, for this. I made this a little too big. I'm looking at this and going, oh, that looks too big. Um, but it's going to be something that I want to, once we've, we've gotten um, this tutorial in the can, I, I want to be able to, to announce it and launch it. But again, it's, I'm still trying to convince my brother to kind of jump on board and do this. Um, I pitched it to Nick. He liked it. But I don't, um, we haven't told Aaron yet, or at least I haven't talked to him yet about it for the logistics. But even if, they, even if uh, at some point... I want to do this one concept, this one idea, and again, it involves everyone. 
Um, and I think if we do it right, the outcome would be pretty freaking epic. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and then go ahead and add some color to these guys. Now they have sort of a grayish tone to them. Oop, why did I, why did I do that? Uh, let's go back. There we go. Uh, they have sort of a grayish tone to them. So let's click over to, back to my my look. So there's, there's, there's different styles, you know, there's, it's like a, a, a sandy color um, with, with mixes of f uh, flakes of white and stuff. But for simple color shape, um, I kind of want to go, I like the darker or the lighter tone with the darker face. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out a combination of what would look nice. Oh, you can hear my dogs and what doesn't work. See, so let's go with, again, me being colorblind has always been a challenge. I don't know if I've said that to you guys, but learning, again, going to art school and learning the fundamentals of like, tri, you know, triadic colors and the color wheel and, and how complementary colors work really helps when I have a visual uh, representation of that on the side. I get red and green colors mixed up quite a bit. So um, I find myself, it's, I find myself like asking questions. Hey, is this the right color? Does this look right? Because tonally I can get things working right. But sometimes if something was a little orange, I might actually accidentally click something that has the same tone, but might look slightly greener, like a yellow green as opposed to an orange. It's really weird, but it's, it's a frustration that I've had my entire life, but I've, I've gotten around it um, pretty successfully. Uh, and many other people, uh, many other artists out there are, are colorblind more than you realize. Um, and they just adapt to uh, that. Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and get my solid color. There we go. I'll do a solid color. That way I can block this in. I'm just going to see if this, this gray, uh, this brown sand color works. Uh, let's see. I think you'll see more than retired people in RVs now. Yes, that is true. Uh, Citizen Zero says, did you do the hot chip challenge with your brother? No, no, never, 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 never. Um, tell me what color do you see guys? I'll ask you this right now. Hey, does this look green? Hopefully not. Hopefully it's a, more of a sand brown ish color, um, that I'm, I'm doing here, but the key element to this, what I'm building here is that the that the butt also has a nice rich red color to it, which is a, a, a story point in this. Uh, Caroline Wilson says, hey Travis, sorry I'm late. I've been following a drawing challenge with a bunch of other people. Oh, that's awesome. Drawing challenges are good. And actually, as a matter of fact, I was just mentioning something that would involve a drawing challenge of sorts with the folks like you guys. Um, if you guys are interested in doing an animation challenge, we have, I have something that I'm gonna pitch to Aaron, try to get him on board and see if he likes the idea and then um, uh, go ahead and, and do it. But that's, that's, we've got, everyone's got so much on their plate right now, but it was an idea that I, that sparked the other day. Um, actually it was a reminder because Coconut Justice and and uh, Carlos and Jack and, and actually Jack was the one that mentioned something uh, which sparked this old idea of mine that I, I kind of brought back to life. But again, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later. But does this look... Uh, animation challenge, yes please. Druby says, yes, that would be awesome. Um, what do you guys think of this color? Please tell me. Please tell me. Uh, I'm going to go... And again, I'm trying to keep things simple. I, I think in terms of the hair color, um, I like it. And then I'm going to just change up the change up the hands and the, the face a little bit here. So I'm just trying to figure out what would be darker, maybe grayer. 
Uh, let's see, maybe something like that, possibly. Uh, try the gray. Uh, try the gray, maybe better. Color is baboon. The color is baboon like. Um, the, try the gray, maybe better. Uh, I think the gray might be better for, let's say, the the mouth and the the muzzle and uh, this area here. Uh, and his ears and hands. So let's try that. I'm just gonna pop pop these colors in. Once I've got it in, I can start changing stuff up pretty pretty quickly here. Um, I think I've showed you guys this before. Uh, his hand's looking a little smallish on that one. That's okay. Uh, I'm conditioned to thinking Rafiki is that color. Oh yeah. Um, I like the tone of it depends on the skin color. Yep. Well, again, I'm trying to create this sort of skin tone that's more of a grayish. Because if you notice, even with the baboons, they have similar colors. It's just a gradation, slightly variants. But I also want to, I, I don't have to make him this color. I could, I could make him blue. I could make him white. Um, I could make him any color I'd want as long as it looks, uh, as long as they complement each other really nicely. Um, if you look at like mandarins who are like, they're, they're, they're baboon like, but they're not. Um, they're very colorful uh, primates. Beautiful, actually. Love the look and feel of uh, mandrel. Uh, let's see here. The hands. Uh, blue might pop the red, but more. Uh, why Citizen says, why are they angry, but all Disney character is happy? Um, why are they angry? Um, they're more like they, they're more like uh, they're more like attitude because um, I was drawing these at the moment when I was reading a script where they got offended by um, Bo, and Bo is basically saying. Uh, introducing himself to them as hello test subjects and they're like whoa you can't put labels on us and then I'll have uh, parts where they're they're happy but these guys are, are predominantly I might make them look a little bit more like hey bro more like a beach bum type of character so you'll have that aspect of it um, but this is not a Disney show this is my show and I am gonna draw them however I want and just and that's the other thing just because I worked at Disney doesn't mean I draw Disney characters however um, that is you can't help uh, but draw sometimes in the style that you were you were taught in um, uh, it's a combination of trying to find my own my own voice in a uh, in a world where I was trained mostly to draw Disney type stuff but I really try to force myself not to um, I just have a natural style of drawing that tends to look happy or excited. If you notice a lot of my drawings, their mouths are always open or they're always smiling. And I guess, you know, it's my default pose I always go to, but, uh, you know, I, I don't apologize for that because I like happy things. I like things that are happy, even if I'm grumpy, which I tend to be a lot of times, believe it or not. Um, I get grumpy. Looking a little khaki color. Uh, you are a you are a ex Disney guy. Yes, I am an ex Disney guy. Um, little khaki. It is looking a little khaki. That's why I'm trying to figure out. I'll do this and figure out. Um, what you can typically do is go in and draw variances of once you have the design then you just start doing color exploration and that's a whole other thing that you guys would do um, if you're gonna be doing any kind of design work um, again this is for the purposes of storyboarding so I'm trying to get a rough design language that I like in order to keep moving forward once you get into production on anything that you're doing you're gonna want to do color exploration and you're gonna want to do once you've defined the character in terms of design 
you're going to do like three or four um, setups of color and then go through sort of a uh, um, a trial by fire with with the people that are in, the creatives that are involved to kind of see what they like and what they don't like with that color design or that color choice that you've made. Now I can go even a little bit, let's say blue-ish and then change the color up and see how that looks. Um, which gives a little, a little difference. Um, I can explore that more blue-gray look to, to his face uh, and even their hands if I wanted to, which might make that look interesting. Uh, yeah, Mary Beth says the clone colors could be wild colors gone wrong. Um, yeah, uh, let's see, I'm looking at, I think it would be nice if the chest fur was a lighter color brown. Yep, true. Um, let's see here. Yeah, right now, tonally, they're, they're very close in value with each other. So if I went, let's say, with a darker, um, a darker tone, uh, more of a, a slight gray, um, blue, bluish gray tone with the hands and face. Again, though, this is starting to look more chimpanzee primate-like. Um, or I could go stay back into that brown uh, section right here and kind of go a little darker, maybe less, more gray, but still being in that value of brown. Uh, then, then it starts to maybe look like it could feel like it's still part of that, that color choice. Um, again, because it's a cartoon, um, I don't have to necessarily stick to the rules of a realistic baboon either. But just making sure that color, the colors complement each other and work in a way that, that read as a nice clear silhouette and um, their gestures and poses are, are clear with the color choices that I have. Now, with the talking about making this a lighter tone, I can go in there. Tone? Looks like my voice is cracked up. I actually quite like the... Duroc being white furred. Uh, oh, we could do him, Duroc being a little lighter furred, which is actually, that's a really good idea. Um, so let's say the the lighter skin would be, the lighter fur would be more like this. Um, we could go, we can definitely go lighter with this character. Or if we don't do that, we can keep that tone the way it is and just use that light that I have there as a highlight but let's go a little darker with the brown and just see what that looks like. And again, it comes down to a style choice of how you want your, um, your color choices to look. And again, when you do these colors, uh, you gotta think of how complicated, how long would it take to color a scene that was three characters fully animated and three seconds long and you're looking at 24 frames per second and you have to go in each frame and color each section. Um, you really have to think about um, economizing your color choices depending on your budget. Again, all of this depends on your budget. You know, if you have, and right now <laughs> we don't have any budget, so I can do whatever I want. I can make it as complicated or as simple as I choose. Um, because we're just still in the exploration phase of this. And I can go just slightly darker um, for the underneath the brows or the shadow tone here for the, the brow. Um, a little darker. I tend to go always, I always tend to go a little cooler in the mouth. Uh, I don't know why. Then we can kind of go white. And then we can kind of What do we got here? Drew says actually like okay, Whiteford. Um Drock looks cold. Derek looks cold. Uh, cold as in color tone cold or cold as in like cold hearted? That's the question. Um, now, 
again, if this is the great thing about drawing these characters because right now you're seeing him for the, them for the first time being designed in a certain light. Um, and when I start pushing the expressions, then I can find like what would they look like as a default pose? Would they always be angry or would they be smiling? Um, Citizen Zero goes, do you have a function in TV Paint to change color for all frames in one click like Toon Boom Harmony? Yeah, they have something similar to that um, that you can, once you've you've gone in there, you can go ahead and, and uh, change colors. So they do have that function. Um, it would be great. Uh, I think Calipeg is actually working on a function to do something similar to that. So that's why I'm excited about uh, the Calipeg app because I want to be able to have the functionality of being mobile and using my iPad. And then when I sit back down at my desktop, let's say, and I, and I want to use TV Paint, I can just grab the stuff that I worked on Calipeg and then plop it in and use whatever other software program that I want. Um, but the idea initially for, for TV Paint, or I'm sorry, with Calipeg, is that you can do a full on, their goal is to get you to be able to do a full on production just using that one app see here I'm gonna go in and just lighten up just put a little highlight color in there uh, this is yellow ish so darken it ever so slightly maybe a little light for the edge and again, these are roughs, so I'm not going too complicated with this initially, but I'm just kind of give you a general example of how I would start approaching this. And again, I'm doing this relatively fast, and I wouldn't, I will definitely spend more time um, developing these, but it's fun to kind of explore this with you guys and see where I'm happening, uh, where, where I can make improvements on this. Uh, Alice says, cold as in when his face was painted blue, Derek looked like he was he was frozen. Actually, that could be a nice frozen face for him, like when they're dethawed. And that's the other thing. When you create shows, you also have to create, um, once you created the color palette that you like for that character, then from there, you need to look at the story and go, okay, if this character is frozen, what would those colors look like frozen? If this, col if this character is under a hot lamp, what would that color look like under a hot lamp? And then under a neutral lighting, like a neutral tone, what is their natural look like what we're creating now? So you also have to, as an art director um, for a show like this or for any show, you have to start creating different looks for different tones for the storylines based on the color palette you choose for the, let's say, the local color of that character. So there's, there's a lot that goes into thinking about um, how you approach color when it comes to animating uh, a story. Uh, so I, I kind of like this color a little bit. So I'll just push that oh, ever so slightly. Uh, and, you know, if he was smiling more, you would definitely have a, um, a different viewpoint. Um, he will definitely have a different look to him, which I will create in my next pass of stuff. Um, but just getting these quick colors down for him and for uh, Duroc is great. Let's find, let's figure out this butt style. I want to figure out what color red I, I think would work um, for them. I don't want to go too too blinding, but I want it to be be able to be poppy and it definitely has to have a, a red look to it um, even if I maybe went a little slightly darker tone that feels red but without it being too saturated uh, you don't want to I don't want to over saturate it and have it feel like iridescent looking um, oh Spencer Barber oh okay hello Spencer Spencer says what is arc arc is the name of this show um, that I'm creating here, which is a, um, I'm actually going live as a live tutorial series, not a tutorial, but more of a live series on developing ARC. Where I'm actually developing a TV show right now. Um, 
of, of my own with a bunch of other guys and we are putting this together. I'm going from script to animatic and I am going to, uh, at the end of this, we're going to go through the process of voiceover recording and editing and all of that good stuff. And you're going to watch it live as we're doing it. And then we're going to eventually pitch and see if we can get it picked up. If not, that's okay. Um, but it's fun to, to go through this process of developing and then sharing it with you guys. Um, Ark is basically the title of the show and also the name of the ship that they are currently on, which is Animal Relocation Colonization. That's an abbreviation for Animal Relocation Colonization. The ship is, is being shipped off to a far off planet in a distant galaxy where humans are and they want to basically uh, reintroduce animals that were from our planet Earth to there and so they've cryogenically frozen every living single insect, plant, and animal on this ship and is being currently launched and so the, the, sh the story takes place um, in space on this ship traveling endlessly through the galaxy as uh, it becomes a who, what, where, and why question of what these guys are doing, what's their purpose. These two characters that I'm drawing currently, um, Spencer is uh, secondary characters for this particular episode, which are a series of, uh, uh, well, there's two main character baboons that kind of are unfrozen, if you will, um, and uh, they run amok during this episode. They end up destroying pretty much the engine room um, in this one episode that we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe bring a little highlight there, a little highlight right there. Uh, maybe just a gray, maybe do a blue gray tone right here to kind of show. Oh, that's too much. I don't know if I like that. What I typically do is um, just do another alpha, uh, another layer above that, put an alpha layer on, and I do either a warm or a cool shadow tone on a on like 20% and as dark as I can to kind of give a nice shadow. Um, so I like that red. I think that red works okay. And we're just going to kind of go in here. And again, this is just for the purposes of drawing, um, getting comfortable with. Our, our characters and so I can start boarding them uh, for the TV show so if that was let's say I think Alice was saying you like the idea of uh, it being a lighter color I think that would be great let's let's make Duroc almost like uh, let's see here right there Stay with the same brown tones, but maybe lighter, lighter color, less saturated. Let's see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and increase that. I'll just block this out real fast. There's definitely something fun about him being a lighter color. I almost think of, again, I can't help but think of Beastie Boys and that one song where he goes, Rock! And then so we got Durock. So every time I'm reading his name, I keep thinking of that 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 lyric in a, in a Beastie Boys song. So it's, I can't help it. It's my, I'm dating myself. Uh, let's see here. That feels pretty decent-ish, but we want to do some sparks of, of white. Uh, maybe go lighter here. Um, Spencer says, that's awesome. I just barely discovered your channel. How often do you stream like this? Ah, uh, that's great. If, if you just, just discovered my channel, please spread the word. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of things in the coming months. I'm going to be on my website. Go check it out at, and let me switch over to my banner. Um, really quick here. For those who are just attending and seeing this for the first time, go up to subscribe to sketch to animate YouTube. Um, and also go to my Patreon page. Um, the Patreon page has been set up to kind of support the, the live streams and the free 
back to basics tutorials. Um, I am currently in the next month or two going to be putting together uh, paying tutorials that will be through my website. So look for that coming soon. Um, also go down to sketchtoanimate.com and sign up to my newsletter that we'll be putting out once a month and telling you about what we're doing, what's new, what's happening. Um, we are going to be, we, we have plans to do paying tutorials that you can you can download and buy. Um, we also have the Patreon to support if you want to sign up for that. Uh, through Patreon, we're probably going to be doing the, the concept of uh, a later tier where we can do online uh, drawovers and critiques uh, I, where I can go in and actually do drawovers for you over your current artwork or productions that you're working on. We'll, we'll give it, we'll make it specific to people that want to have questions regarding a shot that they're doing, uh, how to become a better story artist. Um, maybe you're working on a scene that you're having trouble with and you need someone to kind of do a drawover for. Um, we're setting that up for that kind of scenario. And then um, for uh, more recently, I'm doing a paid um, tutorial through Creature Art Teacher, which is my brother's website, uh, through Nick uh, Birch and Aaron Blaze, and it's going to be based on Calipeg, uh, taking you through an intense tutorial on that, but I am also, it's also good, even if you don't use Calipeg, I'm essentially showing you how to animate keyframe traditionally. Um, a lot of the similar features that are in Calipeg are in a lot of other animation tools out there, but it's the brilliance of having it on your iPad. So it's an app that you can use on your iPad and you can do full productions on that. There's a lot of advancements that are happening. So as that tutorial gets released in mid-June and when Calipeg starts to increase and add more advances to their software or their, to their app, I'm going to add on to that tutorial uh, and give additions to that. So look out for that. I'm going to go back now to... Oh, where are we? Transition again. There we go. So we're back to color. Um, I'm trying to figure out what kind of uh, light I want for this guy. I feel like it'd be interesting to have him a little bit lighter even. Now, texturally speaking, if I was to put this in a production, uh, this would be a nightmare to have to draw brush strokes like this for every frame. So, again, this is just for concept purposes. I would not <laughs> would not want to make any production when I have to go through all of that. I'd have to. I would definitely figure out a simple way to kind of emulate this look and feel that we're doing right now uh, without it being painful and costly for production. Again, these are things you have to think about, guys, when you're developing something. You got to think about cost. You got to think about time and budget. Opportunity cost, as my partner in crime, she would say. What is the opportunity cost for this? Um, let's see. Lindsay Shalinsky says, yes. Oh, hey, Lindsay. How you doing? I don't know if we've talked before, if you're new to this channel. Um, happy to have you here. Um, Citizen Zero says, do you still have a funny drawing you draw for your brother? Uh, of my brother, do you still have the funny drawing you dr you draw for your brother? Uh, what was that? I, I don't remember that one. Let's see here. 115. We're getting a little we're getting a little behind here. I typically go for three hours on my live streams, which is kind of crazy. A lot of people go, wow, that's a long time, but you know what? I'm drawing anyways. I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm actually producing stuff, and I get to share this with you guys, too. And as long as you guys are enjoying this and don't find this boring um, and monotonous, um, you know, I want to make sure that I'm not boring the tears out of everybody here. I want to be engaging on this. Um, but I do feel this is beneficial. If I had somebody like this when I was learning animation, I would be watching them all day and just drawing along with them because I'm sort of a social butterfly and I like to have that that uh, interaction when it comes to animating content. Um, it's the one thing I miss being uh, remote is the idea that I can, I can hang out with my peers. But I have found other ways of going around doing that, which is 
setting up uh, Skype time or Zoom time uh, with my friends to kind of uh, get that going. I like the idea of having a blue sort of feel um, to the eyes. There's, there's something kind of interesting about that. Might just incorporate that a little bit here. Um, there you go. I, I kind of like the blue. I don't know. It kind of looks nice to me. So I might stick around and keep that for a bit. Again, this is just exploration. Um, where are you, Alice? What do you think of this uh, white over here? I'm still trying to manipulate and figure out how I want to care, uh, design this Duroc character. I feel like he needs to be like more of like bolder, whiter. So currently I, I'll just go up a little bit more, maybe pop it up, still make it on the white side. But I'm going to try. Oh, I almost hit it exactly. I wonder if I just did this color for him, period. And other thing is when you do colors like this, there's another important aspect that you want to consider. And I'm sure if any art director was watching me right now, they said, hey, you also have to put them against backgrounds. You need to, you need to see how that color looks against a painted background. So um, it's not just finding the color that works for it, but also finding the color that works in conjunction with the environment. So you're, it's, it's being an, an art director's job is a very challenging, very rewarding, but not an easy task. Um, uh, that's why I love developing. I love getting involved in the story and developing phase, but, and then having someone come in and art direct um, because that takes a, a specific talent and um, I have such, well, I have a whole lot of respect for every level of production and what it takes for every artist's skill set to, to make a show like this happen. It's not easy, um, but it's rewarding. And if you're working with a good team, that's why it's really, because you're if you're on this day in and day out, you want to work with people that you enjoy working with, that you really like. And it's important to have that. Um, I Like I've said before in the past, it's more important for me to work with good people um, than the project itself. Um, you'll get more, uh, you'll learn more, uh, you'll get a lot more accomplished, and I think it'll be a more of a rewarding experience for yourself having, being around people that really love what they do and love to share and uh, help people grow in this field that we're in called animation. Uh, Drewby says, good contrast between two. Alice says, the white ivory looks very good. It helps the face pop. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm starting to like that too. Um, although I still want to make sure that that red for his butt is going to work, which I think it will. Um, I think he'll still, still have a nice nice look and feel to it. I am going to go a little bit darker or here, I think, with his face. And kind of like Bo um, on the side, darken this up a little bit more. And then Maybe lighten that up a bit. Well, the key is not to undersaturate it either. Go up in the triangle there. You can see how I'm I'm kind of approaching this again because of my color blindness. Um, I'm constantly checking myself and making sure that I'm I'm hitting the right colors, and I'm constantly having people uh, look at my work to make sure that I'm hitting the mark. Um, it's nothing that I can I can do. It's it's just a part of who I am, and so I just adapt to it. Uh, oh, Gratz says, "Did you see my question?" Uh, sorry, Gratz. Who's uh, Where was your question? Okay. Uh, oh, Gratz says, "Before I animate my characters for the short film, is it a good idea to to do like a walk cycle and some acting?" Yes, um, not just, you know, one of the first phases of, of this is obviously designing your character. Whoops, sorry. Designing your character. But then the next phase is you want to build expressions. 
uh, do an expression sheet, uh, do poses, action poses, but do those based on the story that you're currently writing. So put them in poses that you would probably see them in if it was in an animated production for this particular story. And then the next thing you would do, because that's a prelim to you building it towards doing animation tests for this. If you have dialogue for it, great. If you have, uh, take a story scenario from your short or uh, that you're doing grats right now, and then pick out something really, really simple because what you're doing is you're killing two birds with one stone. You're, you're practicing your, your acting through animation that you based on poses that are based on the story. But now you're taking a scene from your, your film and you're, you're, you're testing it out to see if, if the proof of concept works. And so, and then if it does, who's to say, oh, I gotta go back on that one. Who's to say you can't just use that shot and repurpose it into your short film that you're creating. So in other words, you're developing something that is relevant to the production that you're doing and you're not waste, necessarily wasting your time um, on things, especially since you're the only person doing it. So you gotta economize yourself and time manage yourself efficiently to be able to kind of get everything out the door the way you want it to. So that's important to, to do. Um, we all, as artists, have uh, time management issues. Uh, I don't care who you are. Um, <laughs> time management is, is, is an issue for, I think, most people uh, in general. But as artists, we tend to be more procrastinators on a whole. And so, and that's okay. It's just something that we have to kind of address and deal with. But knowing that, just make sure that when you look at your production grats, that you are looking at it from a sense of, how can I test my stuff out, the process of which I'm developing, and do it in a way that fits within the schedule of the story and it, it emulates the story that I'm doing. And here's my partner in crime sneaking by. But you know what? I'm going to say hi. Oh, look at you. You look nice. I like that outfit. It's just from the west out. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. So uh, Chocho is my partner here. She is a civil engineer, and so she's now working from home remotely. Um, so she is dressed very nicely from this up and then just wearing regular clothes underneath like shorts. But she's got like a suit look. Uh, whoop, I'm, I'm sliding here, which is kind of hilarious. I could be wearing boxers for all you know, but I'm not. I'm wearing actually pants. I like to dress uh, when I'm sitting here uh, working. It makes me feel more comfortable. But that is kind of funny that she's she comes in all looking fancy up above and it's everything's plain below. Um, I'm adding a little shadow tone to this just to have in there. I do like this color choice. And the thing that I would do with this is typically I like to go in and let's, before we go into some boards, it's what? 125 right now um, it's 11 12 1 130 that's almost three hours I may have enough time to just do a couple of beat boards for you guys before we go into it but let's say I'm going to add a color tone and I'm gonna go underneath all of this I'm gonna put it right there and let's go ahead actually bring it over here and do my see bluish gray, mid-tone, and what would be great is filling this in. Is it working? Why are you not coloring? Oh, there it goes. This is taking a long time. All right, so let's go ahead and put that over there and see what that looks like. Um, and then I'm gonna hide this layer right here. Hide that. And I'm also gonna hide arc because that was brought in as a solid um, image. That's a JPEG, not my type. I can't find that type anymore and I can't figure out <laughs> what font that was that we used. This was kind of a cool font that we found. And for the life of me, I have it somewhere with my thousands of fonts, but I can't locate it for some reason. So let's get rid of that. We have the baboons. I'll make sure the baboons, uh, did I draw something somewhere? Let's put it up there, increase the size. 
There you go. Just leave it at that. So for that, for this thing, I'm going to have this. Now I have a, a, to a color tone behind it to kind of pop those colors out so I can see them a little bit better and clearer for everybody else. Let's zoom in on that. It's not looking too bad. Uh, you know, again, I'm trying to create something that's going to be simple to oops, simply use uh, and reproduce and recreate. Uh, I'm on the wrong layer again. Where am I? I need to be down there. There we go. So, oh, Alice Jones says, Mary Beth, that's a pretty clever idea. Oh, Mary Beth, that is so true. Time management is always a struggle. Don't judge me, but I do a bullet journal to help me keep on track. That really helps. Actually, guys, that's a great, Mary Beth, that's awesome. And I'm sure Mary Beth, that's years of trial and error of being, uh, you know, being more efficient. I have, uh, if you will, a note notebook. I have plenty of these notebooks, and they've got, I've got all kinds of notes and jargon. I, I write like I'm an insane person. Um, I write like I am personality wise, so I'm pretty, pretty all over the place. But I have to write notes down constantly to kind of fulfill the things, their goals. So I have my my things to do list. And sometimes I forget to do that and I'm not always consistent. And when I find that I don't do that, I tend to um, slow down on my, my follow through. I'm a, um, I think part of the challenge of Annetta is, is time managing me and now managing me from South Africa. But, you know, like for Nick, I have, I wrote down all the things I need to do for Nick's, uh, the video tutorial that I'm doing for Creature Art Teacher. So I've got that posted as an important thing. Um, but I think even more important, guys, when you're doing this is to be forgiving to yourself. Don't beat yourself up too, too much if you haven't reached all of your goals yet. Um, you know, everything has a time and a place. And if, as long as you have that persistence, meaning you're, you're, you're making an effort to get the things that you want to accomplish in your life done, even if it takes like me, uh, several <laughs> iterations of, uh, several live streams to get all the beatboards done, then so be it. I'm forgiving myself because at least at the end of the day, I'm one step further than I was two hours ago or three hours ago, which is nice. So thank you, Al, uh, Mary, for um, suggesting that. I think that's a good, good thing to do. And it seems like uh, Alice appreciated that as well. So let's go back into Shadow Tone here, uh, just to kind of pop that a little bit. And I kind of like the, this particular color for him, um, for Duroc. Now, for I might want to do more of a yellowish color up here. That's more of a green, I guess. Can't quite tell. I think I'll go with this. And then, of course, this is going to say, uh, I'll do it really small, uh, party. animal it might sound the idea is that it's 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 supposed to be sort of like you know generic and kind of cheesy cheeky um, to have party animal on there because a lot of these hats are kind of cheeky to begin with and so we kind of want to poke fun at those those types of hats that have that whole concept uh, Univincibility in, hold on, un un uninvincibleet. Oh, uninvincibleet. Who's new? I haven't seen your name before. It says thank you so much for saying that. Artists tend to hold themselves to insane standards, and I think forgiving yourself for not being one hundred ten percent every minute is a really important lesson. Yes, it is, and it's a lesson that I have to remind myself constantly that you know um, you're not perfect. You're not always going to be on the mark. You're not always going to hit the goals that you want to, but you only have today to make it the best that you can. And guess what? Hopefully 
if you're healthy and, and strong, you'll wake up the next day and you have something fresh to start. That's the great thing about starting and waking up is you get to start all over again and start something new. Uh, try not to dwell on the past. Try not to dwell on the things that mistakes you may have made because it's important because um, that can be debilitating and uh, detrimental to your growth as a human being and also as an artist creatively. You have to forgive yourself. You have to look at, uh, as if you will, the glass half full. And it's hard for some. I know a lot of artists that um, have issues uh, or struggles, not issues, they have struggles with this confidence or um, positivity you know but I'm I'm always gonna be here to kind of be a positive force for anyone that's wanting to be in animation and wanting to make a career out of it and wanting to create something and do it I'm gonna be here to always be a positive influence if I can um, I, I don't like the negativity there's we got too much of that it's much easier uh, it seems it's harder sometimes to be positive but it's also contagious when someone's positive. Let's get this mouth color in here. Um, you know, you'll notice that even with Aaron, Aaron likes to, and myself, we, we, we were both kind of, we're, we're cut from the same cloth. So we, we have similarities, but different in many, 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 many ways. But uh, we both like to work in tones because having a mid-tone is a really good place to start instead of just stark white. Um, which I find um, good to, to use, especially when I'm designing. Uh, and you'll notice that with a lot of other artists, they'll put some sort of color tone in the backdrop to have their, their characters pop out. Uh, yeah, especially the last few months. Yes, you're, you are right. Univincibly. Univincibly. Where'd you come up with that? That's unique. Univincibleet. Univincibleet. I'm going to have to say that a bunch of times. Univincibleet. And um, before I forget, I just want to thank all of the Patreons that have, that have signed up um, so far. If you haven't and you, and you like what I'm doing uh, in terms of the live streams and you like what I'm doing with the Back to Basics tutorials, um, then please um, go check out my, my Patreon page. We're going to be adding a new, uh, a new uh, I guess, tier to that um, in, the, in the next coming months or so. But um, you can hear my dogs. My dogs are, my dogs have gotten to this, hey, I can bark. I know how to bark now phase, um, especially my, my uh, the brother to the two loves to bark now and it's driving me a little nuts though but I love him he's a good dog just got he has an ear ear piercing ear piercing bark when he does bark and when you don't expect it you're just like oh so let's see here I'm going to pop no nope, that doesn't work How's everyone doing out there? You guys uh, falling asleep? Alice, are you working out again? What are you doing? Um, oh. Ren Roni Torres, thank you for that. Oh, hey, Roni Torres. That's an, another person. I don't know how many people are on here currently, um, but we have quite a few. Oh, and someone is speaking unvincibility. Are you speaking French? Oh, that is French, isn't it? Yes, I think it is. I think it is French. I don't like that light. I'll just keep it like this color and leave it at that. There we go. And then for last but not least, let's go ahead and actually we'll color this character. Maybe this character would be... Uh, Duroc, if Duroc was on all fours as a baboon, maybe this would be him. Um, uh, see, Alice says, thank you lately. I've been reading a book on self-compassion. 
And in the author's studies, those with self-compassion tend to be better with goal setting, still trying to put it into practice. You know, so am I. I, I am not the easiest person to live with. Ask my partner in crime. I'm a great friend, the best friend you'll ever have, but a horrible partner a lot of times. Um, I get cranky and moody. I, I don't know if it's my, the way I am. I'm just being honest. But I try my best to be a good person, and that's all we can do. So I'm constantly having to wake up and forgive myself and being a nicer person in general. But that's a great book. Sounds like it, it sounds like you're getting something out of it, which is nice. Um, I see, oh, Paulo Deckers. Hello, Paulo. Um, I'm late to the party. Love your work. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I'm just simply sitting here trying to, to find this character really quick. And as I know, you know, since I have no one telling me when I can get off the live stream, um, I'm just going to keep working until I get this thing uh, down the way I want it and then I'm gonna move on to doing one more page of beat boards and then probably call it a day because I will be doing another live stream tomorrow guys um, eventually I'm going to limit it to one live stream for um, this particular arc and then the next live stream will just be for other things like storyboarding uh, questions or uh, breaking down you know a camera um, I, I really want to get more into focusing on story a little bit uh, over the next few months since I'm doing this. But since I am also an animator um, and a character designer, I can uh, do demos of that as well. If you haven't been watching, I, I just did a Calipeg tutorial um, and then I did a dem live demo, uh, a live animated challenge with Coconut Justice and over at Sketch Zone. And I took that animated rough that I did during that time and I am incorporating it into my Calipeg pay, uh, tutorial that's going to be through Creature Art Teacher. And um, I did a little dragon flying in the air. Uh, and we're going to be adding little bat wings to it. And then he's, he blows out a puff of uh, fire. And I explain how I keyframe the fire and do the smoke um, through Calipeg. It's, it's pretty cool. Like, And I always say, it doesn't matter what software you guys use, it's how you use it. It's, you know, as a creative person, um, if you just had paper and pencil, um, you can still do the same thing. Uh, the software there is, is for you to, uh, to explore your own creativity, but it's how you use it and work with it that's going to make it unique for you. So you just have to actually sit down and draw. Um, and this is what the world I live in is drawing digitally, traditionally. So I'm gonna put a little highlight in there. And let's just throw in a little dark again right here. Oh. So like, I mean, this, this, this is starting to come together. There's something happening here, I think. Uh, I don't know what you guys, please post your opinions. Um, if you hate it, that's okay. Um, I like to do positive critiques, things that are critiquing you, but giving you a solution to the reason why you think a certain way. So if you don't like something, um, the meet it or beat it policy that Aaron's always brought into the room, especially in story is, if you can enhance or make a change to something that will enhance and make the story point better, then that's a solution to meet it or beat it. You're beating this current idea. If you can't come up with a solution to a problem, a story issue or, or a board issue that you're currently going on to, then the idea is to leave it alone, let it go, and move on to the next thing, and then come back to that at a later date when you might have a solution. Or if you don't have a solution, leave it alone. If it works the way it is, if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's also important. So now we have our baboons colored to a certain degree. Um, Citizen Zero says, oh, uh, Punk Mermaid sounds rad. At the moment, I'm, uh, Punk Mermaid sounds rad. What's, who, who wrote Punk Mermaids? I'm, I'm, I'm a little, 
lost on that last comment. Citizen Zero, uh, what about the space costume? Oh yeah, that's right. If these guys, so the idea is the main characters wear suits. And the idea behind the main characters wearing suits is that they're wearing suits that were in a, like an arsenal of costumes. And remember, the the, the story behind us is that um, there was only one person, one human that was going to be on the ship manning this huge ship that's like the size of Texas. But because he forgot to be on the ship, he still left all his belongings. So his character, through video, through photographs, through clothing and, and things that he's left behind, are still on the ship. So the question would be, do we have costumes for all of the characters that are in this? Or do we leave them in their natural state like I have now? So that's a big question. We can explore the idea of them being in suits. Um, maybe they're not in suits in the beginning and then they become suits because I, I want them to still have that sort of like natural animalistic looking thing about them uh, except for the main characters. And then maybe later on they can, they can wear outfits. Maybe they find the outfits. And that's a story note change that we could do Citizen Zero. Um, within the script as we're boarding it, I can bring those suggestions up to, to the, um, the writer or one of our writers and also the creator. Um, I, we all co-wrote this together um, and asked them what they think would be the best thing for it. Because even after the script is locked in like it is, we can still make changes if we feel that it's going to help advance the story and make the look and feel better. So that's a good note to have. Um, that's something I can explore later, but for now, I'm going to leave it without costumes. Um, so, oh, sorry, Alice said she was drawing punk mermaids. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, punk mermaid sounds good. So it is It is that time of the year, you know, May, mermaid. I think the Bancrofts created that one. I'm not sure if the Bancrofts are the ones that are doing that, but that became a craze to do mermaids. So now that we've got sort of a rough concept of color and we're exploring what these guys could potentially look like, let's go back now into the script and I'll get at least one page of uh, boards, beat boards for the script, and then we'll leave it for tomorrow. But hopefully this has been informative for you guys. Again, I wanted to go back into the baboons. I'm still There's still a lot more I could be doing with these baboons. Um, if I was to say, uh, let's extend this image out uh, a little further and knock this down a little bit. Um, somebody was saying, oh, they looked, um, they looked kind of mean or they looked angry. Um, now, if they were more like bros, you know, you could have sort of like the, the half lid kind of look. I can go in right here and let's go and take my existing drawings that I currently have. There we go. That's what I want. That is what I want. And I can kind of change their attitude. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, hey, bro. Let's see, what would he look like? Too small. Don't want it too small. Erase, erase, erase. Always erasing. Um, see. Smile. Pull off to the side. Let's do another one. Let's try to. go how about that
Change the ban <laughs> change the banana with radio. Uh, Citizen Zero. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we could do we could do. Uh, how about this with a radio, like old school. There you go. How about that? Bra. Bra. Uh, actually, it needs to be a little higher, doesn't it? Ghetto Blaster. Yes. Uh, let's see here. I want to bring that ghetto blaster up to slightly bigger. Man, you, you guys are making me continue to draw this. Well, I'm making myself draw it. It's not you guys. I've chosen to do this. I can't blame it on you. Uh, let's see, a little bit higher right there. Erase that a little bit. All right. Again, it's rough, so why not just keep it rough? Uh, then his hand would be somewhere right there. Thanks for the idea there, Citizen Zero. Uh, let's see here. Um, Citizen Zero, what is your real name again? If you don't mind me asking. Come on, say it again, Citizen Zero. What is your real name again? Oh, come on, dude, you're being too long. You, you, you're taking too long. You know, I might have to call you. That's what I'm gonna have to do. Let's see here, Citizen Zero, where are you? What are you doing? Mohammed, there we go, thank you. Mohammed, you got great ideas, man. I love it. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to Keep it like that. Ah, an engineer makes perfect sense. You know what? My, my partner in crime is a uh, civil engineer for the city of Bothell here. Uh, so what type of engineer are you? Um, efficiency, opportunity cost. I'm sure you, you know all about those things. Time management, being an engineer. Um, being an engineer, are you also a procrastinator? That's the question. He's walking. Uh, I don't like that either. That's a bad silhouette. Let's recreate. Uh, Software, okay, awesome. Networking software and now a freelance designer. Oh, that's cool, that's so awesome. Um, that's really, that's a that's such an interesting job. Um, I have friends that are software engineers um, that are also artists and um, 
I've always found that to be fascinating. I could never, much respect, I could never do that job. I don't think I have the patience to sit there for as long as you have to do to write code or uh, software, for sure. Um, it says, learning from you and your brother how to draw almost seven years now since I find Aaron. Wow, you've been with Aaron for seven years? That's pretty awesome, man. I'm really, I'm really happy. Um, hopefully you guys are learning, hopefully you're learning a lot. Um, and what you probably have learned is that um, the only way you can learn is by doing. You know, you can watch us, and but the only way you're really going to know something is by actually putting what we teach into practice for yourself and finding your own path, which sounds like you're already doing that since you've had such a great career already. And now you're having finding your time to be able to, to draw as well. It's pretty dope. Uh, yes, a lot. That's cool. Um, I don't like this for some reason. I'm also going to uh, keep it there. Nope. Let's do undo. I don't like that drawing. So you know what I do when I don't like something? I get rid of it. Simple as that. I'll come back to it later. I'll shelve that, find a pose that, that works, works good for him. Um, I do like that position. I do like what I've got here in terms of that idea with a boom box. So I'll just put it over to the other side, uh, make sure I'm saving this. And let's hop over now. Now that I've kind of had a good understanding, we've got a, a, a lot, a big lesson in uh, designing characters today. Let's go ahead and let's put some of this into practice with my beat boards. So we're gonna go ahead and go over to uh, the beat boards. So where we were on page, I wanna say, was in page nine, and let's see, I've got, wow, it's almost three hours, guys. Can't believe you guys have been lasting this long. That's kind of nuts. Well, I would be drawing, I draw 14 hours a day on average. 12, well, 12, 12 to 14 hours a day just because I'm so busy trying to build this sketch to animate and also uh, work on other projects. So it's kind of finding a, a way, like Mary said, the big thing is, you know, writing a journal, keeping things organized. Um, forgive yourself when you can't accomplish all the goals that you need. Um, we're on page 10 of 16. <laughs> God. Oh, persistence. Persistence. That is the key. All right. Top of page 10. This is a conversation that Duroc, Bo, and Sue are currently having. Having. Now, we've introduced in the last place that we were. They were in the engine room checking it out. She say, hey, here's another cool. We'll go. Uh, we'll just start off on page nine so you can have a recap. Uh, banana flies through the frame. Let's go back. Uh, banana flies through the frame, breaks the control uh, control board behind Bo. The ship goes off course. Gallus uh, yells. Ah, we're off course. Get them out of here and do not try to impress them by taking them anywhere important. And so the next shot, boom, engine room day. Bo and Sue stand opposite of Derek and Duroc in the uh, engine room and say, and Sue goes, and this is the super important engine room. Impress much? And Derek says, sweet, this place has potential. And we're going into now, not this one, but we're going into the next phase, which is uh, page 10, which I will increase. Let's get rid of, let's bring these guys down because I did this on the wrong. Yep. We could do this. Bring this up a little bit. Sometimes if you don't keep track of your files, your layering, um, I can bring this down here, say insert and then that's okay, and then I'll bring this one down to insert, and then I'll bring this one down to insert, and then I can get rid of those guys. And then I'm gonna, oh, not right there. Cancel out of that. There we go. Like, uh, now I can get rid of uh, 
go to this page, I'm going to go ahead and since I've already created this, you know what, what I'll do is I'll just get rid of these guys all together because I don't really need them. I already have copies of them. I put them in the next file. I got a JPEG of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, uh, do I delete? Can I delete? I can delete. Delete layer. Yes. Delete layer. Yes. All right. And one more. Just get rid of that all together because I need that layer. All right. Now we're into our my board panels that I just put up really quick. Yeah, I might do another one where I'll have it more organized. You can say they're inconsistent, but this is more my thumbnail beatboard pass. So we're on the page 10, and page 10 starts off with Duroc saying, Yeah, it's a perfect party locale. Let's heat up this place. Paint the town red. And Sue goes, Uh, bad idea. Too much red makes Bo go nuts. And Bo goes, Yeah, I've got a problem. That bowls the bowl. Duroc goes, Oh, and let's invite some friends. Bo's like, Uh, friends? Duroc's like, Yeah. Make this a big baboon party. We'll put the banana bar there. And Derek's like, in the hot tub over there. And Sue's like, and the dance floor so we can shake our butts. And Duroc's like, nice thinking. Derek says, yeah, great idea, Sue. Sue whispers to Bo, they know my name. So she's all excited that they, they're actually getting to know her. And Bo's like, uh, party, uh, Sue, can we talk privately? And then Bo rips open a vent, and then the two stick their heads in. So basically, they're in a room, and for them to speak privately, Bo just rips open a vent door and shoves their heads inside the vent so they can talk privately. And then Bo goes, uh, what, we should, what should we do? Uh, Gallus will be mad if we release any more baboons. And Sue goes, yeah, but if we don't tell him, then we can wake up all the baboons we want, and you'll have an endless supply of test subjects and it continues on to the next page so this is sort of like a slapstick comedy like I said before and so for this page I think I want to simplify uh, let's see I'm trying to think how I can do this uh, really it's about them having a conversation back and forth you know him going we can put the bar over here and Derek says we can do this over here and then Bo or Sue's trying to chime in and then there's that uh, panel where they talk privately so to kind of get the gist of this these boards I gotta figure out a way to simplify this uh, Claudio Tolome says that's so great amazing very inspirational uh, and then Citizen Zero says, I always steal from you, Citizen Zero says, some of your sketching. Alice says, you're almost there. Yes, I am almost there. Uh, Claudio, are you saying that's great and amazing to the story script? So that I just read from this script, this page, uh, for, the, for what I'm trying to do for the boards. So now i got to figure out how to do that. Um, but before I do... Um, if you guys stick around for just like three minutes, I got to grab something that I forgot and it's going to be blank. I won't be on the screen, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm just simply stepping out for like a couple of minutes and I'll be right, right back.
Okay, I'm back. Hope you guys, Alice, I hope you were doing some push-ups. Um, 100, uh, probably, you could, probably could have done 100 by the time I, I was gone. So I was missing a page of script, so I was looking for it rather than reprint something. So I, w I just wanted to put on, so I'm going from page 10 to 11. And I just wanted to, to kind of end that because it, on the script I have, it says more. And so the more as it continues on page 11, she says to Bo, yeah, but what if I don't, what if we don't tell him and then we can wake up all the baboons we want and you'll have an endless supply of test subjects. And to celebrate, we could throw the tiniest little bitty party. And then Bo goes, that's it. Brilliant. Plus, then we'll have a friendship secret, a friendship secret. And so Sue and Bo look, uh, link pinkies and bite their lips. Very cute and ch cheeky. And then they go out and then they say, uh, they, they look at that and then Durak says, now get ready because it's about to get steamy up in here. And Durak pulls out a lever labeled engine temperature with his tail and then the info screen next to the, next to it goes from safe to danger, burning hot. He pulls the lever further, snapping it off entirely. So that is the sort of inciting incident to the, to because of this, because of that, and then boom, till finally now, the party is about to unfold and we're going, we're starting, we're in the third act, almost going into the fourth act because everything's going to go amok at this point. So we're going to do for page 10, we're going to just board out um, and make sure I'm on the right one here. Uh, 100 push-ups I wish. Uh, <laughs> Coconut, you're still here. Oh, I should have called you. That's what I should have done. I should call you and see what's up. Uh, let's go ahead and get to this. Uh, come on, Alice, you can, you can do a hundred push-ups. That's what we should do. We should do an exercise challenge in the middle of this because they're three hour sessions. We'll get up, take a break and we'll do an exercise challenge. I know coconut, you can do a hundred push-ups. Come on, man. I know you, I know you, you can do that. So we're in line arts. We're going to hit zero go in here and then the engine room again I had the engine room is sort of like this uh, uh, maybe have a, a, a an entrance uh, let's see here that's line art I'm going to drop that down and one's looking up and he's pointing Let's see, he's pointing at something. Uh, maybe he's pointing that way. It does help that I've drawn these guys a little bit to kind of kind of get used to um, drawing them a little bit better. So I'm just drawing a really loose thing where he's like, we can put them over here and put one over here. Um, He's walking forward, so let's say, and I'm going to draw the layout and everything on one one frame here. I typically like separate my layers, but I'm just going to, for time's sake, I'm just going to do it this way. Um, perspective, more of an upshot, so we kind of feel like he's he's going in the room, entering it, and looking around at the different things that he could do. Um, and again, I gotta really look at some engine rooms and figure out if I want to do go like a more of a um, industrial look and feel to it, almost like uh, you know turbine engine kind of look and feel, or do I want to go super high tech? Which of course we can. It just depends on how I want to kind of approach this sort of 
feel, but it's everything I'm just kind of loosely putting in shapes just to define a, <laughs> a kind of a fake it engine look feel to it. Um, let's see here, they're in the engine room. The engine room is round-ish. Maybe I need to make this a little bit bigger. rock is right here and then we have maybe there's a, a vent we have just a, a array of vents I'm just again blocking in basic shapes and then we have Bo uh, kind of looking on at them nervously his hands together and then Sue is kind of like in the foreground let's, let's get rid of that Sue's in the foreground all excited looking at whatever he's looking at Let's make that a little bit darker. I'll pop. I'll pop this out a little bit more. Um, actually, before I do that, I can darken it up like this. I can just go in here and go to my little effects. Uh, color adjust. I kind of like the way I darken everything, so I'm just going to leave it just like that. It's dark enough. Now I can go in and add my uh, little hint of color underneath real quick. So that's going to be down here, my color tone. All right. And what do we have here? Uh, no other questions. Have we hit 100? I keep getting these little marks and it's new to me on Restream. It says, hey, you've reached 100 questions on Restream. Congratulations. Yay. Uh, let's see here right there all right so let's add our color tone actually we can switch over to this one and for the purpose of these beat boards you don't have to get all fancy with it you can I do a gesture and then I just kind of block in the shapes really fast to kind of hint at the look and feel that I want for this. And we've got Duroc over here who's probably, now that we've, we've designed it, he'll be a little bit lighter. With a darker hat. And then, uh, no other questions for anybody? Are you guys all bored, gone, done for the day? If you have any more other questions, ask me now um, before I end it, oh, because I'll be ending this pretty relatively soon. Okay, I just did 10 pushes from, from my knees. Good enough? Uh, yeah, okay. That's fair. That's good. Um, I'll have to do my, my 50 after this. 
I only typically do 50 push-ups, uh, 40 to 50 in intervals of like three sets. That at least gives me a semblance of feeling like I accomplished some kind of exercise. Um, I'm kind of manic at times because I'll, I'll, when I do things, I usually go extreme on them. So uh, if I run or if I bike, I gotta just, I can't just, I gotta go full force. I don't know if you're like that coconut justice because you're similar to me in a lot of ways. Uh, and Scribbler, man. I know you work out. Don't even give me that if you don't. That's just pure genetics then. Uh, let's see here. A little bit of these guys. And if you notice, I'm keeping these thumbnails really simple, but exploring how we can uh, figure out the compositions and the angles that I want to kind of approach. And I'm not really, again, this is placeholders for ideas so that I can go in and explore them because I'm, again, trying to get the broad strokes of an idea out for these, uh, these boards themselves. And then I can later on go in and, and add stuff to it. So you've got... Uh, Derek saying we can go over here. Then you got Bo saying, we, uh, Duroc saying we can do this. Um, we've got, uh, let's see, I'm gonna tighten this up, add a little dark to the eyes. We got, oh, did I grab the one? I did grab the one one. I gotta go up to the next level. There we go. Um, we've got Sue who's all excited because she's made new friends. So there's that aspect. Let's see, Susan, still quarantine where you live? Yeah. Um, oh, Gareth asks if you know why he's getting a line 52 error. Not sure he's got the point of the questions he's coding. <laughs> Ah uh, man, you know, you know that live fifty two area, man. Lift, it, error gets you every single time. I, I, I feel you, I feel you on that one. Um, coding, dear God. Um, I, I'm thankful for coders because we wouldn't have much of what we have today digitally if we didn't. Uh, quarantine where you live. We are in phase two of quarantine, Citizen Zero, which means. Um, our, our governor, hats off to him uh, for, you know, he's going against the grain for most people that want to kind of get over this uh, quarantine, but he's been really diligent about trying to slowly um, reintroduce uh, social, the you know, bringing the economy back in. Um, as you know, with the United States, everything, you have the government regulations and then you have um, state and local. Um, and so each state, in the United States, of course, has to um, rely on the governors and the and the, the to make decisions as far as what they can do for the state uh, and local government. And so, in the county that I'm currently in, our numbers are still a little bit high with the COVID cases that are coming in. We're still we're still getting cases that are not low enough for them, us to go into what they call phase two, which is uh, opening up. Uh, I think restaurants or bars or something like that. Um, I, I can't I, I can't remember what the thing is, but essentially we're still at home. Um, we're still social social distancing. We can't have big numbers of gatherings, um, that kind of thing. And so we're honoring that by keeping our distances. We have been able to visit some of our friends have come over and said hello. Um, people that we know are, are COVID, you know, haven't been exposed to anything. And so what you're going to start seeing probably, I think, is a lot of people that are cre going to create little social pods. So people that are close friends that kind of stick together and um, they all know they're safe. And so they're able to kind of go back in and socialize with them. Um, but we're still going to have that whole issue 
with overall social distancing. So I don't see any of this really changing a whole lot until probably next year. I mean, September, things are, they're trying to hopefully open up stuff in September, but you know, the way we used to do things are still gonna be a little weird for the next several months, maybe even into the end of the year. That's what I'm predicting. So I'm just sticking it out and having fun doing this, meeting you guys virtually and drawing and enjoying my time. So uh, let's see here. <laughs> he says respect. That's right. I do respect coding. Much respect. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go darker on here and put a little shadow tone. There we go. Little shadow tone for this guy. Little shadow tone for them in the back. Again, I'm just keeping these boards super, super simple. And then where am I with my layout? I think I'm back here. I'm gonna put my color layout here. There we go. So nice quick quick color layout. Oh, I've got a texture on this I didn't realize. That's okay. Let's go here and do it. Do it instead like this. I can go a little lighter. Uh, Mr. Abitur, hello to you. Do you have any exercises to become better at, at two D animation? I'm actually reading a lot of books of Richard Williams' book, Eric Goldberg, and others. Uh, I'm actually practicing a walk cycle animation. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Abitur, if you go to my Back to Basics tutorial, um, and then that I'll just transition real quick. If you switch over here. If you go up to uh, Sketch to Animate YouTube, which is basically, um, it's youtube.com forward slash sketch to animate that you can see down below, which is my website. Um, go to that back to basics tutorial on my YouTube site, uh, which my Patreon page is support uh, there to help support those free tutorials. Uh, I have a bunch of free tutorials. One in particular is I have a three quarter walk, how to do a three quarter walk. So go rumble through that and see if you find that interesting. Um, but the only thing I can say is you're on the right track with uh, Eric Goldberg's books and as well as uh, Richard Williams. Those guys are some of the best in the industry. I've worked with, um, with Eric Goldberg before. And also I have, um, uh, I had a pleasure of having dinner one evening um, with Richard Williams uh, the year before he passed. Um, and it was really a memorable experience for me to be able to kind of sit down there and just have a have an impromptu dinner. I'm, I'm friends with his, uh, I was a colleague of his son, Alex Williams. So we all were just playing catch up and it was at Annecy. But I would say, um, look at reference. Um, there's techniques that I show in my, my uh, walk cycle. I'm doing a three quarter walk, which is probably one of the harder walks to do um, because you can't you have a lot of back and forth actions and a lot of twists and turns with the hips and I do a walk cycle of this girl um, that I've posted previously um, you guys let let Mr. Abitur know if you liked that walk cycle if anyone's seen it if you think it's a good recommendation for him to look at but go check out the YouTube my YouTube page um, but really it comes down to figuring out basic techniques and it all falls back to studying um, from real life. Uh, really look at how um, movement affects another. When you work with people like that's bipedal or quadruped, uh, there's, a, there's a motion forward. The reason how we move forward is because we, we literally, we don't realize we're doing it, but we, we lean forward, we put our 
our trust in gravity to lean forward. And by doing that, it forces us to lift our legs up and take a step and catch ourselves. So we're constantly falling forward and catching ourselves, recuperating, falling forward and catching ourselves. And as a result of that, that general movement going forward, other things are reacting to that. And because we're like hinges, we're, we're rotating, we have a rotating shoulder and rotating elbows and wrists and neck and head and hips and knees and ankles, all of those are secondary actions that are being affected by the locomotion of moving forward and then catching ourselves. So if you think about it in those terms, there's a, there's a hierarchy and a mechanic to how you are going to break down your own animation, whether it be realistic or cartoony. There's still that hierarchy of uh, the initial uh, movement and then your secondary and third tertiary actions. So hopefully that helps. Again, I'm just, you know, you've got some of the best information out there, like Eric and, and Richard Williams's book, but I always find that sometimes it takes someone um, the way they explain it, like how I explain it, might resonate with you. You might that might give you the aha moment that you need in order to uh, move forward with the animation that you're trying to achieve. I find it a lot. It's like you know the rules are all the same, but with each artist we apply it differently to make it work for our own brains. And that that is that is definitely the truth right there. We we all have a different way of approaching things. So if I do something that you like and I and, and I can explain it in a way that's logical and makes sense to your brain, then that's awesome. I'm glad that I can help achieve you grow in that sense. Um, we're just going to add a little color right here. Nothing fancy. So now if I take a look at this, you know, you can see how when I blow it up, how simple the drawing is. It's it's I'm just putting a gesture down. I would go back into this later and really look at it and focus on uh, proportions, depth, um, you know, maybe make uh, bones a little bit smaller. But it's giving you the sense of or an idea of a space or a place or a tone um, that he's like, hey, we'll put the bar over here, we'll do this. And, oh, Mr. Abitur, you're very much welcome. Uh, any, I'm here to help in any way possible. Um, so I know that soon and very soon, are you guys interested in me creating actual in-depth tutorials that you can pay for? And uh, similar to what Aaron's doing, Aaron's been really pushing me to kind of start doing that now, um, seeing that I'm doing my first tutorial with him. I want to start putting really concrete stuff together. Now the, the back to basics are supposed to be five, 10 minute uh, tops um, tutorials. I'm narrowing them down to more like five minute simple tutorials for you guys to have that are condensed tidbits of information that are useful and then go into more in depth uh, organized wise with how I approach uh, a lot of those back to basic tutorials. I'll go further in depth with those uh, with the paying ones. but. The goal here is to uh, create tutorials that are story driven in nature. That's the theme behind each tutorial to help elevate your story. So we've got that. And what I typically do and I've told everybody else is I write notes to myself uh, on these um, beat boards because that's what they are. And I got to remember that I'm going to pull back out of this zero and then make sure this is called page. 10, page 10, and then um, what I like to do is just write a little note to myself saying, uh, just so I indicate what part of the page that I'm working from, and then, you know, Derek's like, we'll put Derek, uh, let's say, Yeah, it's pretty perfect locale. Paint town red. Derek says uh, we'll put the hot tub over here. Put the hot tub uh, 
over here. And that's my indication of where I am on the page. Um, uh, there, I'll just might write, write a little note uh, looking, looking around the engine room. Oh, engine, engine, yeah, engine room. I gotta learn how to spell. That would be good to be a good storyteller. I think spelling would be good. Uh, let's see, Alice Jones in in-depth tutorials would be good. I did see the 3D walk cycle. It made sense. Got it. Um, Citizen Zero, do the character designs and animation. Do the character design and animation fundamentals. Yes, um, I do have a plan to do that. Um, you know, we have our Patreon set up for the Back to Basics so people can choose uh, what Back to Basics tutorials they want to see that are the five minute ones. But I think, I'm trying to look at if I had it. Um, I wrote it down in a note which one we were talking about possibly doing the first one on. But I always like to listen to everyone's feedback to think to see what will be helpful in terms of what would be the first one. And I think I have the page right here. See my crazy ass uh, create. Sorry, my crazy notes. I try to keep this a kid friendly uh, live stream, so I apologize for that. So um, one one of the things that we talked about doing was going through and how to build a, a, a storyboard port. For, uh, how to build a storyboard portfolio, portfolio from scratch, meaning a lot of people come to me and ask me how to, um, what they need for their portfolio. So I put a back to basics free tutorial on how to, uh, what they're looking for from my perspective in terms of what you need for a portfolio. But we also talked about, because we have a lot of students um, that are looking for building their portfolio to get work that maybe having a more in-depth, like we'll take you through the steps on what types of things, not just what you need, but how to get those in there so that you can have a stronger portfolio. That was one that uh, seemed to resonate with people. So the next one would be, uh, Derek says, yeah, make this a big baboon party. And then Sue goes, and a dance floor, we can shake our butts. And then maybe I can have something where, if that's the case, um, I'll do that one where, you know, um, let's see, oh, why force myself to draw small? Actually, I like drawing small a lot of times because um, it helps me simplify things. But now that I can zoom in on it, maybe I'll do something where, um, Let's see here, uh, Bo, maybe Bo's right here. And Shaking her, her booty a little bit here. Uh, uh, how do I draw that effectively? That is the question. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can literally have her twist.
There we go. Maybe something simple like that. I'll just do a quick rough of that and tie them down a little bit here. Get that out and then he's just sort of like, what? Uh, bad idea. And maybe he's over here looking, looking back. And do, do the rough. This is her saying, shake my booty. And it's quiet out there. I hope, are you guys still out there? I don't know. Just making sure. Either way, if I was not online, I would still be drawing to myself here. All uh, right. He's like a little bit of dough. I don't think we should be doing this. And then this is Sue going uh, dance and a dance floor so we can shake our butts. And let's see, bring that up, looks like. Let's see here, we got that. All right, thank you, Gratz. And then, uh, maybe this is where Durak goes. Nice thinking, Sue. Uh, she's all excited that they know her name. Just eating and watching. <laughs> uh, speaking of eating, I need to eat something too soon. Uh, let's see here. This one. I am drawing her weird. She is not, that does not look like her. There we go. So I am showing you how to just do quick gestures uh, when it comes to this. And then we can have him in the background, maybe Duroc in the foreground.
Oh yeah, we have to have. We definitely have to have the classic. Um, uh, Kirk says, "Hey, you got to have the classic '70s disco." I was like, "Yeah, yes, definitely. You definitely need that." Um, let's him up a little bit. Maybe right here. And again, I'm 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 playing around with depth, and I'm playing around with different camera angles, and and uh, as I'm doing this to try to figure out what could work and what uh, what can work and what can't. Um, yeah, maybe this. He's saying, you know, that's a great idea. Have his hand out like this, or maybe kind of great idea, and Bo is a bit nervous about all of this. Again, as I'm simplifying and I'm getting used to these characters, I'm, I'm being able to find quick shortcuts. And you notice how loose I'm drawing these, but I'm still keeping my shape language there. And you'll find um, that as you get further and further into your own uh, project, uh, that you're going to find nice shortcuts to each step that you go through. And again, it's all about persistence. I think this whole theme today was about persistence, not giving up. Keep going and following through on what you have. Forgive yourself. Allow yourself to have um, time to work through the things that you need to accomplish. Write down your goals. Do your daily, um, daily exercises. Make sure that you are... Um, keeping yourself as organized as you can, especially when you're working on big projects like this. It's important to have some kind of organization. And then, a little bit of character design we had today, right? Give it some sort of depth in the back. And then the last one would be, this is uh, Dirac saying, good idea. Uh, good idea, Sue. Oh yeah, great idea. Great idea, Sue. And then Sue's all excited that he knows his name. And then, then the last one would be um, them breaking into and looking at themselves in a vent, which uh, I will do something sort of like this. Um, where he rips over an event and they're sticking their head in the vent. So let's, let's uh, drop it over here. And I'm kind of thinking, whoops. Um, as he sticks his head in, there's that cube shape of his head for perspective. He's all nervous about what they're doing here. Bo has his, his reserves and Sue 
gives him encouragement that we they can open up more, unfreeze more baboons in order to suffice his experiments while she gets to get what she wants, which is having a party with these guys, these two baboons. So he's in there talking to her, sticking her head through. Let's erase this part. And then see how loose I'm working here um, maybe her her hands in the vent uh, arms in the vent sort of vent feel that we have. Right, and we're almost done with page 10. It's like watching paint dry, guys. He is so big that he just is barely able to fit his his head in there. Neck. Uh, Bo and Sue stick their head. Head into a vent to talk privately. <laughs> More entertaining than watching paint dry. Well, thank you. Jesus. Uh, Paint dry can be fun. You never know. I mean, that can be pretty exciting for some people. I have to say. But um, let's see. Let's take a look at this as a whole. So I, I basically roughed out, um, really loosely roughed out these poses. And I could just keep them the way they are and just go in here and, and block out some shading like I could do right here right now. Um, kind of give it a little bit more pop. Now, I like to use this one instead for this. For some reason, I like this last drawing I did real quick. And again, for your beat boards, it all depends on, it's up to you what you wanted to do, how simple or how complex you want to go with your beat boards um, for, the, for the purposes of what I'm doing now. And I don't know why I have a texture on this. It's interesting to me. I have a texture, but that's okay. It's not going to bother me. I'll just be like, why do I? I don't know why I have a texture on here. Um, but that's okay. Let's switch it over to 
back. Let's switch it back over to this. That feels better to me. Let's just do an overall color here. Because I'm going to go ahead and make sure that there's a shadow tone happening. To, so they're inside a vent. So we want to have the vent feel like you're in a shade and then maybe have uh, a lighter light source coming from that little corner that we see up, up in the top there. So make that a little bit lighter right there. Paint doesn't talk, although if the paint changes color drastically it, it as it dries, that would be pretty cool. Like pink to blue. Oh, okay, that would be interesting. I think um, do a time lapse of that. There you go. If anyone has the time and energy to do that, go for it. And let me see the, the end results. It's always cool to see things time lapse. I don't know if you guys like watching time lapse. I do, uh, especially when you have things like microorganisms that grow over, or mold, or parasites, or things that grow over a period of time. To watch them in time lapse mode that someone's taking the time to do, it's pretty dope. Pretty, pretty cool. So, so let's see here. Kind of get a sense that are inside something. Um, let's go ahead and add a shadow tone to this. All right, so we've got that. And so if we went, go down or go up one and let's see if we can add a shadow tone. Darker there. Kirk Michael says, I've Enjoyed watching and drawing your ass off. I've also been doodling and animating with TV Paint with my little Intuist tablet. Yeehaw! Well, good for you, man. Good for you. That's uh, that's pretty awesome. Now, the only thing that I would say for this is I would want to.
showing that they're in there, maybe add one more little thing just for this one, and that would be adding an area, maybe slightly transparent here, 65, go all the way light. just to kind of give an illusion of some light kind of in the backdrop. Maybe some light has carried in. Oh, got too big there. Some light has carried in through the vent. Uh, allowing just a slight hint of a light. And then add a little directional blur on that. Let's see if I can do a directional. Say okay, and then add one more uh, say in the same area. Darken it up slightly. Yeah, man, we're, we're uh, Citizen Zero just saying how you can make characters look so funny. Um, it's just, you know, it's 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 not easy. It's very difficult. I find comedy incredibly challenging and hard, and always trying to find something that's. Uh, and the only way, like anything else, is by doing being good at it is by doing it over and over again until you get it right. That's for sure. I'm just trying to figure out a way to make that pop just a little bit more. So there you go. That'll give a sense of, of some kind of light. Uh, I'll just lighten that up just ever so slightly there. And there you have it, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up with that. So we did page, we page, uh, did page ten. We're gonna go ahead and I'll, I'll wrap this up. And for those that are part of the Patreon uh, page, um, I will be compiling more of these beat boards together. So I'll have a more, uh, more put together uh, PDF that will have both the first part that I offered on my Patreon page. I'm offering PDFs with little more detailed notes for my beat boards and my process of what I've been doing. I'll, I'll add a lot of the stuff to the to the current one that I had already released. So there'll be an, a part two to that. So you have more of a condensed version of the beat boards with notes. And then again, that'll be offered on my Patreon page. So if you guys are interested in that, you can do that. And um, that's that's it for now. Let's go back to, to this. I'll, I'll go ahead and finish up these uh, after I hang up here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up uh, the rest of the boards. But that kind of gives you a sense of, of them talking the vent. Again, it's simple. It's loose. Um, you saw how quickly I knocked this out. It's, it doesn't have to be um, too complex, but it does have to have clear, concise storytelling and, it's, and hopefully help benefit you for story points. So it's a matter of kind of exploring what is the best angle, what is the best staging, what is the best attitude um, that you want for your show. And again, I'll, I'll probably do these and maybe even with my PDFs, take a look at them again, knock those back and do an, and pick out certain ones that I just want to add more uh, design to so that I can use this as a starting point to kind of create layouts 
and different things like that. So they're the beginning stages of how I want to block this thing out for my storyboards and then use those as a platform to kind of develop further prop designs and things like that. Now, I don't have anything on this page that I've talked about before in terms of uh, prop designs. It's mostly them him ripping off the vent, so I would have to create like a vent design that he rips off and then sticks their head in, whether it's round or rectangular like I have now. So that's something to be determined. So, um, Marahashi says, thank you, Travis, is always fun. Life Fantasy says, thanks for the streaming. Thank you for helping us. You hit a new record for streaming time. <laughs> oh, God, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. It's like, I guess it's like Twitch, because if you're on Twitch, some people leave their cameras on all day and you just watch them draw. Um, for me, I try to talk and draw at the same time. So you're helping me because I'm, I'm not as lonely during the day and in a bubble. So that's great. Let me switch back over to Big Travis. Um, I don't like to call myself Big Travis because I'm like 5'5 five, five on a good day, guys. You haven't, for those who've never met me, I'm short. I'm a short man. I am a short man with a big heart. Let's see here. Uh, switch over. So again, um, I don't have, subscribe to Sketch to Animate YouTube. That's youtube.com forward slash sketch to animate. And then you can also check out my Patreon page. Um, again, soon that's coming up is my Calipeg tutorial that uh, will be pretty in depth. It goes through my whole, whole practice of how I approach animation. Um, as a matter of fact, let's see if I can pull up something here for you guys to see before we head out. And I'm just gonna see if I, ha um, if I didn't download, oh, did I download it? Let's see if I downloaded it. Yeah, let's, let's switch back over here so you can see this. Um, transition. So again, guys, this is something that I did and I'm gonna, um, because that's on preview mode. Double click that, and let's put this on loop as I talk a little bit. Where are you? There you are, loop. Loop, loop away. You're gonna see the drawing is very light for the rough because that's how I drew it in Calipeg. Um, but we can go ahead and look at that real quick here, and let's play it. So I, I just did a little snippet of tie downs in this for uh, my Calipeg tutorial. And in this particular section, I go over in Calipeg how I approach the flames and, and um, also approach the smoke. Because in Calipeg, one of the great features of this is that it is considered a traditional uh, animation app. That that's what it was based on. They will in the future versions. And someone asked me a question, uh, I think it was Kirk Michaels, um, the new version, uh, I don't know when that would be coming out, probably in the next m couple of months. Um, but some of the features that they're working on that I can kind of hint to is um, because I am a beta tester, uh, the ability to import video as well as sound. So that will be a big feature added. Um, so, and, and many other kind of little things. Right now, they're, the first initial way for Calipeg was to take the initial program that they had and optimize it as efficiently as possible. Now, other people online have said, hey, um, you know, why don't you have a trial? Um, spread the word, they're, they're working on doing a free trial for people that uh, want to try the app first and to give it a shot because I know once you try it, I think you'll like it. Um, you know, other people have said, hey, you know, this is, this is an intuitive. It is very intuitive for people that never animated before that just started animating, it's super simple to use. And also, um, there's detailed information on their website that give you documentation, videos on how to. And now that I am coming out with my own uh, paid tutorial through Sketch uh, Creature Art Teacher, we're gonna go really in depth into the software, but with its current phase. I mean, it's gonna get better with each iteration that it does, but in this particular tutorial, I will go over step by step with this, and in fact, you will get this project, like this particular project that you see here, 
um, part of the, the Creature Art Teacher thing is that you'll be able to have those actual Calipeg files to mess around with and look at the hierarchy and how I did things. So not only do you give that in-depth tutorial, but you'll also get that. And I might even be adding some extra little tidbits on the Calipeg tutorial with Creature Art Teacher, which is uh, which you'll see later on. But um, I'll announce those later once you uh, once the app becomes available or the tutorial becomes available through Creature Art Teacher. And then I'll we'll do um, uh, uh, an official release of that, and then I'll talk a little bit more about what you have in the uh, tutorial itself. But without further ado, um, I am just going to leave it like this. I'll let this keep running, and I'll transition over to my outro. Let me let me see if I can get to that thing. But again, go check out sketchtoanimate.com. Uh, subscribe to my newsletter. Um, Sketch to Animate is going to be a lot more. We're going to uh, than what it currently is. We're going to be adding again a section where we'll have free tutorials we will be adding that whole idea of doing uh, draw overs and critiques um, but they're going to be specifically oriented towards uh, if you have a scene or something that you ha you're struggling with and you want something in particularly uh, done or you need someone like myself to kind of simply go over there we'll be offering some kind of uh, reward either through Patreon or through a workshop orientation of sorts through sketchedanimate.com for that. Uh, we're still working out the details simply because it's time management. It's figuring out where I can have the flexibility of time and not only that is because I have friends all over the world uh, I have to find time zones or periods of time that will work for everyone um, that want this opportunity. So again thank you guys so much um, I'm going to have fun finishing this guy off because I got another week or two to finish this animation plus my other mythical dragon that I have in there and then those will be the final little touches that will be added to uh, this tutorial for Calipeg. So without saying, without further ado, tomorrow will be much of the same, more focused on beat boards and then um, hopefully, <laughs> I keep saying this, We'll eventually get into actual boarding and that's when we can start talking about shots and setting up your cinematic language what what is the ebb and flow of what you want to do camera mapping talking about a little bit of that so but again we're gonna be doing this live and at some point at the end of this we might even do some kind of tutorial that's more in depth through creature art teacher that's something we've been talking about but thank you for showing up it's I've, I've past my mark of three and a half hours or whatever it is. Uh, I don't know if that's a huge milestone, but yay! Anyways, see you tomorrow, hopefully around 11-ish, I think-ish, something like that. Um, and then, oh, Coconut just to say, hey, that looks cool. So, talk to you later. Here we go, I'm gonna exit out, hopefully seamlessly. I'll keep talking and rambling until I do. Uh, enjoy this video and see you tomorrow. Nope, that didn't sound like I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>